What up, what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We were at Steve Kim. Got Trent in the cut. Yeah, Trent in the cut. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? You at, man? Uh, in the gym, shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. No Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that that are like-minded and and just are real and genuine better stay in your lane hop, hop you, you, you are fucking insane you dude what you just will not give this guy his flowers what is up what is wrong with you oh you must have thought i was a bitch gotta get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a wrap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said, that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gap, Smitty and Jason Brown. You will never be as great as me. That's the thing about it. You will never be as great as me. What up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on, y'all, man? It's your main man, Big Smitty here, and welcome to the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We here live, man, on this beautiful Thursday, man. Talk that talk Thursday. Let's talk that talk Tuesday, but we're going to do talk that talk Thursday, throw it back Thursday. Whatever Thursday you want, we bringing that to you right here live, man, and we are feeling good, man. Cannot wait. For today's loaded show, you know it's Thursday, so we got Sean King joining us today. We got Steve Kim. Our guy Achilles might be joining us as well from the golfing field. Who knows, man? But listen, we are so excited to be here today, and I can't wait to jump straight into it. What's going on, chat, man? Who we got in here, man? We got Jazzy Jazz. Good morning. Uncle Moose, good morning. Jerry, good morning. And Sam Jones. But before I dive into everybody in the chat and talk to y'all, I got to give y'all a little bit what's been on my mind all week long, y'all. So, listen, check this out. I went to church. Uh, yeah, I've been going to church the last few weeks, y'all. So, I heard a word at church a couple weeks ago, and I want to give it to y'all, man. It is okay to reset. Let me say that again. It is okay to reset. Oftentimes, we confuse resetting with failure. We believe that if you have to start something over, that it means you did not succeed, but that's far from the truth. A reset happens because you've now learned more information on your journey and have gotten the proper tools and armor to now prepare yourself for the real battle that's ahead. See, oftentimes we want the full blessing right from the beginning, but the reason that doesn't happen is because you aren't ready for the fight just yet. When you don't have the proper mindset and tools to get you through the hurdles of that journey, why would you get that full blessing when you're unprepared? So in order for you to reach your full potential, you must, you must go through the trials and tribulations of life. It's a part of the journey, y'all. You can't avoid it. I wish I had a better answer for you. I wish I could tell you that life would just be all musical chairs and dancing and partying and good. That's not real life, y'all. You got to go through stuff in order for you to grow into the full person that you're supposed to be, man. There's no way around it. There's no way to avoid it. And if you think I'm wrong about this, then guess what? I don't care. Everything I say is a fact because Smitty said so. That's how we're going to start the show off today, baby, man. Like I said, we got to load the show. And I want to run through these topics real, real quick before I bring on the leader of this show y'all know who that is real quick though man listen big time show today dallas police issue an arrest warrant for rashi rice meaning that this man has to turn himself in Ooh, wait shador sanders was on ig live during his first lecture at colorado ig live i like on this 
on his phone. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Shohei Otani's interpreters, he's set to take federal charges, charges, excuse me, clearing Otani's name, allegedly. Hmm. We're going to dive into that as well, man. John Calipari arrives in Arkansas. He wants to meet the team. But guess what? There is no team. <laughs> Bear GM Ryan Pohl says trading Justin Fields was one of the harder things he has ever had to do. Sounds like I was right a couple of weeks ago when I said that Ryan Pose wanted to put Justin Fields in a good position when he traded him. Oh, uh, I mean, hey, but what do I know? Adam Silver says what Jonte Porter is accused of is a cardinal sin, and this man could be banned from the NBA, man. Who gambling is taking over. Russell Wilson says that he has paved the way for other black quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes. Uh oh. By the way, Russell Wilson was also recently on the cover of Essence Magazine. Can't wait to hear JB's opinion on that. Giants tight end, my guy Darren Waller, is unsure about his playing future, contemplating retirement. And, of course, man, C.J. Stroud was seen throwing with his newest receiver, Stephon Diggs, at UCLA. We got a loaded show, like I said, y'all, but it wouldn't be right without the leader of the show, the man of the hour, one of the greatest coaches in Juco history. He's a champion. He's a leader of men. He's a guy who changed lives of others. Whether you like him, you hate him, whether you agree or disagree, this man will always keep it one thou wow with you. My homie, my OG, make some noise in the chat. Clap it up for the one, the only, Coach JB. Bring him on, Bailey. Now that's gangster. Masters week. <laughs> gangster. <laughs> What's going on, JB? <gasps> Call this man Jay Bonds. <laughs> I got all the sporting events because we're the coldest sporting show on planet Earth. And, and he got the all red on. Y'all know what that means. <laughs> So what's cracking? We man, call it bracket. We, <laughs> we, we say bracket. <laughs> you intro the show. You intro the show. Got in here now. I was outside getting my putts in and shit. We got the Masters this week. And you know me, man. Yeah. Hey, when 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 your star player goes down, you got to step up. That's what I did, man. You out there living life again. So you so real quick for the viewers who weren't here yesterday. You're at Pat Perez's crib. You and Az living life. Eating steak, shrimp, Benny Hanna's, rice, and you, you just doing, you just living like, how is life for you right now? What's going on? Just regular, regular day. <laughs> 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 another day, <laughs> another day, another dollar. Uh, so I just want to clarify real quick. Yeah. I'm in the home of Pat Perez. This is irrelevant now. Because <laughs> uh, there's a few cats on the Masters from the live playing this week but uh this no longer matters no more <laughs> what? you're only watching the masters this week to be honest keep it real to see if tiger can make it or break it that means does he even get through a day with his recent health uh issues uh, there's over and unders on bet online on prize picks on winnable the tiger woods won't make it through the day there's big money. You can go to Winnable right now at winnable.com slash slap picks. And we will have, I will have, if anyone out there wants to bet golf, mm -hmm. I will have picks from real deal professional golfers that I'm going to be with all day. So if you want my picks on the Masters, just so we can clarify real quick. There's going to be probably a three to four hour delay to start the Masters today. I heard this last night. It is true. It's already on. They've already delayed it. A big weather storm came through mm. Augusta, Georgia. So the Masters is delayed, um, but it will be on today, hopefully. And I got our picks on Winnable right after this show. You can go to winnable.com slap picks and get you some true, real golfing experience picks uh, who you think will be in that hunt to win the green jacket. 
Yes, yes, yes. And speaking of Wonderful JB, before we move forward, there's no way we can start the show off without showing love to two of our, our first two people who joined our paid plan on Winnable, which means that these guys are getting direct text messages from us every day with all of our exclusive picks, whether that's from me, JB, if that's from uh, uh, Jeff Nadu, or whoever else we might have on there. So shout out, huge shout out, number one, to Max Hess. He was the number one person who signed up. He is getting a, a hoodie or shirt. I think he said he wants a, was it an extra large or a large? I got to check the chat. And then shout out to Patrick George for being closely behind him as the second person as well for joining the paid plan, man. Patrick George, Max Hess. Hey, Patrick, if you want a hoodie or shirt as well, send the email. Or if you're in the Discord, hit me up. We'll make it happen. And uh, just shout out to y'all, man, because you guys are getting that exclusive right now. We appreciate y'all for joining. Yeah, golf tournaments in person are, are fire. They're not even close to what you see at home from your TV set. So if you guys do like golf or just a, a vibe, go check it out. Because golf tournaments in person are a whole nother uh, energy. Um, but betonline.ag is also a, a sponsor of the great Coach JB show with Big Smitty. And we got our a lot of picks to give you today. So let's get you to the quote of the day. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today, become part of the team, and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. Here we are, JB. Quote of the day, man. Are you ready for it or are you nervous? Let's go. Sometimes, Big Smitty, we create our own heartbreak by our own expectations. <laughs> Ooh -wee. See, sometimes in life you can't even have expectations when you go into something. Just go into it for the love of it, and that's it. Don't go in there with trying to expect somebody, anybody, because you will be let down nine times out of ten. I like that one. Yeah, I banned Gorjan. Gorjan, I banned him just now. I just banned him. Um, like just now? Yeah, yeah, I just saw him in the thing. He said something. This is a great show? Question mark. Like, yeah, and I responded. I said, I said, is that a question or a statement, Gorhan? He was like, is it a great show or not? So fuck it. Put him out. Um, I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I just got, I'm ready for the smoke, man. I just want all the smoke uh matt barn style just fucking bring it um i'm gonna roll it up like chris and boys in the hood and shit so look um <clears throat> that was good? a strong quote of the day yeah i'm glad to come up strong quote of the day right there man i love that that's, that's, that's a real one right there contrary so, yeah. to belief brought to you by prize picks um prize pick check it out go over there uh the sad truth is that most evil is done by people who never make up their minds on if they are good or evil, Smitty. Ooh. Contrary to belief. Interesting. So. Break that down a little bit more. Break that down a little bit more. I, I want to dive deeper into what you just said. Cats that do dirt, do dumb shit, get out there and hit a woman, rob a bank, whatever it is. The next, Later on that day, they'll go and take their mama to church. They'll mm. fucking... And then the next day, somebody fucking persuaded them again because they're followers. Um, they never made up the. Tr they never made it up in their minds if they're good or evil, and they end up being an inconsistent shitbird their whole life. They can do. They feel they can do no wrong in life, and then they go out and do fucking absolute criminal activities. But then they'll sit there and say, "I repent," 
and then I'm good again. And then the next day they're going out there and hitting another girl. It's I'm telling you, mm. I've been around these cats, fake ass good boys. I tell you all the time, there's literally no principles in their in their life. They have nothing to stand on. They don't stand on any type of integrity, character, or otherwise, and it's a fucking joke. So uh, that's just contrary to belief. <laughs> I think we're all a walking contradiction. If I'm being honest, I think every human being, even the best human you know, I think we're all just walking contradictions because none of us are perfect. There's people that's worse than others, of course. But I think we all can say one thing, and I know I'm I'm the same way. I on one day when I'm clear headed, clear minded, not leading with emotions, I'll say one thing, and that's what I'm standing on. Catch me on the wrong day, had a bad day at work, people at work piss me off, or the wife piss me off, whatever the case may be. You might act and say another thing in that moment. I just think that's just kind of how, you know, how we, we are built. But I do, I will say that there's some people, like there's levels to that. There's some people, like you said, will go out here and murder somebody. And then the next day want to go like do this. It's like, hold on, bro. Like you, like in that, in that case, two things can't be true. You feel me? So. Yeah. It's uh hey, JB, he blocking boys today. You ain't playing. You what, up, Gene? To what up, Gene? What up, Gene? Um, Billy Gene. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I could just say it's super shit. Uh, as the show grows, you know, we're going to get dick riding idiots that pop in. Yeah. It is what it is. If you uh, ain't got haters, you ain't popping, JB. Nah. You know, I like our haters. I love haters. Um, I actually love them. Like, it makes me, like, it makes me. My dick hard, my dick hard, because none of them are where I'm at right now. So, look, anyway, um, <laughs> hey, I got a new fan base. Really? Who? I, I did not know this. I did not realize I had a new fan base. It's breaking um, news. It's the University of Arkansas's basketball fan base, I guess. What? I don't know. You got to. How did that happen? Arkansas, dog, I have no idea. Driving to Arizona yesterday, minding my own business. Got a yak. Got a. And I'm smoke driving, you know, we're just minding our own business. And my Twitter is going crazy. I'm getting all these different things. So I sent a few things to Bailey because I was like, I can't hear it through my Bluetooth. Plus, I'm in bad desert reception. I can't see what's going on. Right, right. So then some dude that posted the video who apparently is some sort of uh, some sort of fucking fan or something. Some sort of does a, po- does a podcast for oh, Arkansas. Yeah. So this motherfucker DMs me because I I I uh I commented and I'm like, um, why are you showing half the video that Smitty and I did? Why are you showing one percent of the video? Mm. Of course, you know that's how that goes, right? Viral. Yeah. We do shorts and shit like that. So motherfucker showed half, or not even half, just a video of us talking about. Uh, okay. Look, I have not heard this still yet. I haven't. Oh, heard really? This. Now, this ain't the guy that posted the video. This apparently is some dude who who's a nobody. So, I don't even. I he's a nobody. I have yet to hear anything he has said. So, I guess we'll take a listen together. Let's do it. This message is for the real coach JB or whatever the fuck your stupid ass name is. You suck. Oh, the last chance you? I think the only thing that needs a last chance is that big old nose of yours. Hey, Coach JB, you obviously weren't good enough to coach a real team. You're sitting there coaching people that are on their last legs. If there's anybody that's a meat-riding bitch, it's you. Because you weren't good enough to coach a real team. You weren't good enough to coach a college team. You're coaching people that are on their last chance. <laughs> Shout out random guy in the background here. Um, listen, if anybody's a bitch, it's you. I'm not saying, hey, let's make a deal. I'm telling you this is the deal. Point my finger in your face and twirl it around. Oh. Arkansas gonna own you. So let me explain something to you, the real coach, JB. Go ahead and stick your ass to football, because you're barely getting by at that. 
you ain't nothing but a big nose bitch. You got boogers all in there. You got nasal hairs. You probably can't breathe at night. I think you need to get a. I think you need to get a snoring machine, Coach JB. Or better yet, go to Walgreens. Use promo code D's because these nuts are about to drop on your face <laughs> and get you some Navage. to get that big old nose of yours down. on <laughs> you. That motherfucker said, <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> he called you, you a big, oh, JB, he called you a big nose bitch. Be real though. That shit got, that shit got, <laughs> he said you got boogs and everything in there, JB. I don't, I'm a nose bitch. My nose bitch proportion to my face, I think. Gee, JB, I don't see how you, you draw in the weirdest fans ever. I don't know what it is about your personality or what or what happened on Last Chance You, but you have brought in some of the strangest people on planet Earth. Two Fs. Whether they love you or hate you, it's some crazy. We got like, we probably got about 60% of the people are regular and they're cool who watch our show, but 40% are crazy. Like they're either, like they're literally psycho they're in their basement fucking eating pizza rolls and ranch or they're, they're, they're literally slow. There's something wrong with most of our fan base. And I'm just curious of what happened. Like, I'm trying to make it normal, but what happened? I, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I have no idea. I didn't know. Did we attack Arkansas now? That was my first question. I don't remember talking about Arkansas. Only thing we said is that I think Kalapari is going to Arkansas. I don't think we even said anything bad about it or nothing. We just made the statement. Maybe Jeff Nadu said Calipari sucked, but we didn't say anything. So what's or, this? What's this? <laughs> or overrated? He didn't say. He didn't say. He I think he said he's overrated. I don't want to put the wrong words in Jeff Nadu's uh, mouth. Pause. But what? So what is what is this guy's point again? I think you got a big nose. Arkansas is going to own you, and um. You ain't you ain't really about shit. Like that's just three points. Like right? whole question. So look, I had Bailey look him up. This guy's a nobody. He's got eight hundred followers. So he's not even like a real. It's not even like I don't. It's not. Is it worth my time? And like you know, it's it, that's that's an easy like. <laughs> that's a murder. You know, I murder. She wrote him real easy, real quick. Right. That's easy. But like, is it even worth? Poll question. Is it worth me doing a video to bury this absolute nobody? Poll question. I say no, but let's see what the chat says. If you if you get more yeses in this next sixty seconds than no's, then I guess you got to do it. Let's see. Let's see what our fans say, man. Whatever the fans say is what we do. We say somebody. The issue, my, the issue is the issue is. Oh, uh, no. Most people saying no. The issue is, I've sent twelve players to Arkansas uh, in the last twenty years. Mm. I had the leading rusher in the SEC, Raheem Boyd. Um, the head coach, Pittman's good friend. Um, I spoke up there. The whole entire roster DM me to be the head coach at Arkansas. Um, I think Arkansas fan base likes me more than a nobody with 800 followers. So I really, the reason I don't want to do a video for that guy, he came off like, like Goryan. Oh man. What? You got a flat over there? No, I was uh, almost flying around here. He came off like a Gory, like a female, like a, like a, a rainbow wearing <laughs> Goryan. Doesn't he? Doesn't he have like a little slow? I mean, he did something like at first I thought he was just a normal country dude, but then he went like this. Arkansas. And when he did that, I said, Yeah, he might be a little he might have down I, so I, I, I still I still don't know what I did to piss off Arkansas. I'm still trying to figure that out. Bailey, I'll you gotta do this right now, but this reminded me because maybe I'll do it. I kind of want to just edit the part of him doing the 
I almost want to edit that part and just have that available just for us at all times. It's like just as like a, I don't know, just a certain moments I'll just call for it and we'll just throw it on there. Cause that was some that's some weird shit right there. Like, I don't know. Hey, that's the internet, dog. That's the fucking on you. <laughs> hey, baby, you bad boy, man. <laughs> Barely drop. Hey, he moved too fast. He moves too fast, man. I'm gonna just call that video. I'm for now. I'm gonna just call that the Arkansas video. So if we call for that video at just random times, just in life, just kind of have that in the arsenal, please, because that's some crazy yeah. shit right there. The problem is that I go at him because I can't keep my mouth shut, and I I say the things I'm gonna say. Then I'm gonna be a bully. Yeah, I'm gonna be. A, I, I talk about. You know, the tards. Ooh, I, I just can't. So I'm going to stay away. I'm going to stay away from the Gorgons. I'm not fucking going to roll up. And I'm going to be like, fuck, I'm going to stay away from him. I'll stay away from him. He's got he's got a lot of problems, dog. <laughs> you better really be not, careful, though, because Gorham might, like, he know a lot about you. He's been watching the show before I, might, I joined. He might yeah, sneak up might, on you at Ross. Yeah, yeah. Gorgon's a bitch. I, I got to be honest. <clears throat> I, I This guy, though, this other bitch that just made the video, I'm just like, I'd rather have my problems than his. So we'll just leave it at that. I love it, man. Keep keep it simple. Well, let's let's move things forward. Let's keep but it you going. Know, if he was a big guy, like if he had a following, I'm I, <laughs> I'm doing a video at ASAP Rocky. But hey, y'all, it's killing JB right now to not like he's right now he's battling. It's like the angel JB is right here and the devil JB is right here. And the angel's like, don't do it. It's not worth it. Reconsider. Read some litter. Chur on the subject. You sure? Fuck it. And then the devil's over there like, nah, take his ass out, man. I don't care if he's slow down syndrome, whatever. Kill his ass. He shouldn't have talked. If you're big, you're big enough to talk shit, you're big enough to get it thrown back at you. And he's battling right now. JB, I'm telling you, you have grown a lot in the last 10 months since I've been on the show. Do not let somebody take you out of character, JB. I believe in you. Yeah, two years ago, I wouldn't ask nobody. You already had a video out. Yeah, you've grown a lot. I'm proud of you, man. Like, I'm clapping up for JB for growth, man. This is, this is, uh, this is impressive. This is impressive. I'm up, I got, I'm up, I got cerebral palsy, Alzheimer's. I'm up, I got... No pussy at all. We got no pussy at all. I mean, it's just a pill you take. You don't get no pussy at all. Um, Moving on a amicably. Um, Dallas police issue arrest warrant for Rashid Rice. It said he has 24 hours to turn himself in. This happened yesterday. So I don't know if he's turned himself in yet, but he's probably in his last few hours. And he will have no choice but to do that here soon. Um, more information right here. It says a collision involving injury, felony, jail for no more than five years, a five thousand dollar fine, or both. So this is pretty serious, man. Like he can end up really being in jail for a while, and his career could be could be met, like could be over, could be ruined. Basically, it could be over. Who's um, on day seven six? God damn, the trolls are out today. Get out of here, you fucking bitch. Yeah, he been talking crazy the whole time. Has he? Bye well, bye. to me at first, I was trying to give him. A, I thought he was just like playing around, so I was trying to give him a chance. But then he just keeps going and keeps going. We don't mind joking in the chat and talking shit a little bit, but I think when they just keep on going, it's like, all right, bro, like you just keep on going, like you won't yeah. stop. Yeah. Um. But anyway, Rashid Rice, man, got to turn himself in, JB. I guess you, from a coach's perspective, like let's say this is one of your players, hypothetically, like. What are you doing? What are you feeling? Like, what are you like? What's I guess what's I guess there's really no advice to give at this point. He has no choice but to turn himself in, right? Oh yeah. If he's I mean, why is he not by already? This happened two weeks ago. Right. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Why has he not turned himself in yet? Who the fuck is his lawyer? Who is the fucking team his publicist his pr management how about what has andy reed told this dude mm. like uh, patrick mahomes hey homie uh i thought he was cooperating the day after this whole thing happened he was but i mean i think initially the arrest warrant like the arrest warrant i don't think was out immediately right 
I don't know how this shit works. I, I ain't never been locked up before, so I don't want to like sound. I, I am ignorant on the on the subject. Well, I don't know. Usually, you wouldn't have had a choice. They would have arrested him. They would have been to his house. So I don't know. I have no idea uh, why he gets a pass. He's a rookie on a rookie deal. It's not like I can see maybe Mahomes or Andy Reid. This is a like a rookie deal kid who. You gotta go turn yourself in, dog. And the, and the, and now the lady who who got injured in the wreck uh, that he hit is contemplating suing him as well mm. or something else. So there's a lot of shit going on. I don't know, dog. But why are we seeing an uproar in a technology based era? Things like Uber and Uber Eats and every dining or whatever DoorDash, everything can be served at the door of your home why is he not getting a uber why is not the texas player who's in the top 25 kids to be drafted not getting an uber achilles shout out to achilles in the chat uh he said rom is winning the masters back to back book it mm. um you know you know Achille. appreciate you Achille. We got the we got the thing here at PP's house. I'm in the cut with a bunch of masters memorabilia that he has. Um, I might throw some money on that. He sound Achilles sound pretty confident. He we know he know his shit too. So I don't know. I might throw the money. I'm telling you, you better get on winnable because we will have some real cappers that know this sport on winnable slap picks today. And uh, my money would probably also be with Rom. Um, DJ, Rom, there's some other folks. There's some other folks involved, too. So, Well, we need to get two more people to join the plan before this show is over. So we got two and a half hours to get two more people to join the Winnable. I believe in us. I believe in our chat. I believe in our people, our community that we've built. We can get at least two more people. So we're going to see who the next two is. And maybe we can do something special for the next two. Like I'm trying to think, JB, like for the first. Brooks, maybe, like, said, look, look. Brooks, Kapka, and DJ, top 10 finish lock. Achilles said. Put the money in right now, Bailey. Put the money in right now, Bailey. <laughs> I believe in you, Achilles. I believe in you. Um, eh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, that face you just made. Maybe we should do something special for the first 10 members to join. We'll talk about that uh, during commercial break. But anyway, back to Rashid Rice, though, man. Listen, I'm with you, man. I just think at this point, if you're if you're a pro athlete, and you're going to be out drinking, doing anything, smoking, whatever you're going to be doing. Live your life. I get it. But you just can't drive at this point. And I, and I know, again, I'm I, I'm kind of flipping a little bit because I was always the guy just saying that, um, you know, we all drink and drive before God. Well, we all ain't making millions of dollars or even high six figures. So I just think you got to you got to look at past examples at some point like JB always says look at all these different people who who have gotten in trouble or even murdered people all type of situations you got that has to come to your mind at some point and you have to like listen bro it's not even if i'm not really drunk i'm tipsy it, it is it's just not even worth it like why put yourself in that position at this point you know what i mean when there's so many different options even even you know have your homeboy drive or just Somebody else, don't put yourself in that position. You know, it goes back to the hood, though. Like, you know, even when you got people who's in the street doing uh, illegal actions, you know, the, the lead the lead guy is never the one who's supposed to get locked up and go to jail. Somebody's taking the rap for him. Somebody's going to, because we understand the main thing, the main thing. Like, you're the guy, Rashid Rice, whether you love it or not, once you make the NFL, and I don't know his history of his family, but a lot of us black people, we grow up, we don't have a lot of money. So when one of us make it out like that, you are now the head of the family. Say what you want. Maybe it's not fair. That's what it is, though. That's just a fact. So you got to take that and you got to mature immediately, even as a 21 year old or however old he is. And it comes with uh, uh, instant maturity. And if you don't have that, it leads to actions like this. You can't continue to do the same things you once did. And I, I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't feel bad for him because he's a grown man and he made the, the decision. I just hope that he gets a second chance, meaning that I hope he doesn't go to jail for like four years or something like that. Because if that happens, it's like it's a he's still gonna be young, but it's probably a wrap. And I, I don't I hate to see somebody's uh, a young man's career just ruined 
off of one bad bad decision, but the, at the same time, nobody died, nobody was seriously injured, nobody was seriously hurt. I just pray that he can just, I don't know, get probation, go to jail for me. I don't know. This is the, the shortest sentence he could possibly get. Learn from it, though, of course, and get another chance. You know, so that's where I'm at. You know, I'm the nice guy on the show, though, so maybe I'm being too soft. Um, it's not the rack. Somebody asked me in the chat if I never sped when I was young. Yeah, I sped a lot. Um, <laughs> I didn't still speed. still do. <laughs> I still do. Um, I don't speed. I don't speed drunk, and I don't walk away from something. I own something. So if I do it, I own it. The walking away part is the fucking part that blows my mind, and why I'm always on this show talking about. They have no value for life. This generation has no value for their own life, a little less someone else. I wasn't going to speed, hit a guy, walk away. It's not what I was going to do. Yeah, it don't make sense. So it just this is often, too often, we're seeing this on a day-to-day basis. We keep seeing it every single day. He heard a woman and his, her kid and just walked off like nothing happened. Yeah. Like, this is happening. Jalen Carter did it. A person died. What happened with what we just saw with rugs? Mm. Um, it, it, it's, it's getting worse. L.A. right now is Frisco, Oakland. You're seeing these young cats out here, um, you know, drag racing right in the downtown L.A. It's getting crazy right now. Um, no value for life. They're hitting cats, spinning around in L.A. They're spinning cats, hitting motherfuckers, walking. It's getting crazy. I don't get it. No value for life, dog. No value for life. Um, so, yeah, and always cat see the, 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 the chat always wants to give the motherfucker that is a, that is the reason a pass. So Jalen Carter wasn't driving is always the first thing you hear somebody say. Mm. Why the fuck do you think they were racing? Why do you think this? So. I have no idea. I don't get it. Um, it's crazy to me that people really defend dumb shit. Listen, I don't know. Like for Morant, for me, when we talked about the Morant thing, doing it over and over and over, to me, he should have got a bigger deal. Rashi Rice, the first thing he's done apparently, but the bottom line is he's a young rookie on a deal. Nobody died, fortunately. Um, I don't believe he should be persecuted over this mistake, but. I think there's something to be had. I don't believe yeah. you, could, you could do this, walk away. And to me, he should not. Like, betting can't be worse suspension than this. And not in my opinion. I don't think <laughs> betting can be worse suspension. Because that's the thing. Yeah. You can't. You can't suspend yeah. Ridley for a year. And this kid gets to walk away because nobody died. Yeah. Just because nobody died didn't mean that they couldn't have died. Mm-hmm. And this cat has no repercussion. He, just, he, he doesn't miss a game. He gets fined. And, uh, I'm not feeling it. Should it be a season? Ah, that is tough, too. I don't know if it should be a whole season for this kid, but Ridley got a season. I know, but I feel like I feel like Ridley was overpunished. So I feel like... Now, yeah, like a whole season because really, I think that he bet like a thousand dollars. It wasn't even like no crazy shit. I'm trying to remember the exact situation. It wasn't even that crazy, and he missed the whole season. I thought that was a little too far. But like you said, if that's gonna be your standard, then maintain your standard. You can't do this guy for a season, and then a guy who could have killed a kid and a woman gets what three games or something like. Because my initial my initial mindset, JB, was you know what, suspend him for half the season. You know what I'm saying? No checks. Because to me, that's a good punishment. But when you bring up Ridley and the gambling thing, it's like, damn. Like, Because to me, the NFL was telling you straight up, they think gambling is like the worst shit you can do. They think that's worse than uh, S.A., Damier. Like, they, they think that's worse than all type of crazy stuff. Like, And that don't make sense to me. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So drag racing back in the day used to be on a side street. It would be... Nobody driving, nobody else driving. You and somebody else called each other out. You raced, right? If you yeah. both, if you both die, you die. Whatever. These motherfuckers doing it on major highways with people, civilians driving, innocent people driving with their kids, with their dog, with their wife, with their whatever. And these cats are doing it again. No value for life. If you're not going to value your own life, then 
I have no sympathy for you because that means you won't care about my kid's life on the highway. It means you won't care. Like if that cat hits my wife, my girl, my daughter driving on the highway doing that dumb shit in a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. It wasn't a fucking Prius and a Civic, Smitty. Mm -hmm. I'm coming after you. I'm just telling you right now on national TV. Because you could avoid it. It's not an accident. This wasn't an accident where a car's spun out of control in the rain and blah, blah. This is an act you could have avoided. And then you walked away from possibly helping the person that you just injured. How do you know that person wasn't dead? Yeah, that's the wild thing. Like, uh, I'll let your first instinct to walk away. That's crazy. That is the part that deserves the punishment over everything else. You did a dumb act, okay? Avoidable. You fucked up. You did a dumb act. Nobody died, okay? You got to pass by the gods, so nobody died. So you you're, 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 you're should have owned it, sat there, boom. and But we're seeing it from everybody. Terrell Suggs just did it yesterday at Starbucks, pulled out a strap on somebody. Uh, call somebody a pussy. Said, I want to talk about that later too, because like I got my own opinion on that. But yeah, you're right. Go so on. I mean, we're seeing it from every level, from veterans to rookies to high school. It's happening at all time high, though. It's happening at all time high. Whether you film it, show it, we got more cameras. We're showing it more. We talk about it all the time. It's happening at all time high, regardless. For this era, this time frame that we do have cameras, we're seeing it at all time high. We're seeing. Death, injury, speeding, drunk driving, cats that are getting drafted, cats that are, are drafted, cats that are veterans, rookies. I, I just, it's crazy to me. No value for life. They want to race out here in the hood, the street, fucking up downtown, downtowns all over the country. Like, no value for life. Like, I got a problem with that. Like, that's the problem I have. And I have a problem directly with your motherfucking mommy and data. That's real, man. That is real, man. But, uh, Moving on to another topic, man. Did we get a uh, poll question? Did we get poll? We did do a well, well, you did a fake poll question. Can we do another poll question? Sure, sure, sure. Will Colorado win seven or more games? Oh, that's yes. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that. I wonder, can we do a future? I might have talked to Bailey offline. I want to do a futures bet on Colorado. I want to put a I want to put like fifty dollars down that they will win seven or more games. And I wonder what that would do for me right now. I probably get like ten racks if I do that right now. Just I'll figure it all back. Hey Bailey, can racks. you Bailey, can you send me the link? Text me the link. I got to send to Steve as I'll do it when we do a commercial break uh, for seven thirty this morning. Um, Perfect transition though, JB, because the next topic I was going to bring up is your favorite quarterback in college football right now, Shador Sanders. He was in class and apparently was on IG Live during his first lecture at Colorado. Do we got video footage of this? Let me okay. pause that. Pause that. Let me ask you something. Is this before or after? So I can get some context because I'm going to take, I'm going to be a hater because like you cannot show anything on the JB show with Big Smitty about Colorado or Shadur Sanders. I can't talk to Matt about it. Can't talk to fucking nobody about it. Or I'm a hater apparently. Mm. So let's just be clear here. Um, is this before Dion addressed the class? I mean, the team about classroom Ooh. behavior, or is it after? Now, See, the video is 13 hours old. It was posted on, on Shador's YouTube yesterday. That's when it was posted. But that doesn't mean that's when it was filmed or recorded. So there's really no wait, way wait, to wait, know wait, when wait, it was, wait, it was wait, recorded. Wait, 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 wait. It was posted on what? Shador's YouTube yesterday. Shador has his own YouTube channel where he makes money. It was posted then. So Shador Sanders posted that video that I just watched earlier this morning that was sent to me. I don't know if he posted it or his YouTube person, whoever. Somebody posted on his channel yesterday. Yes, that is correct. It was posted then. So we're not going to claim ignorance, though, that it was on. He posted it on his YouTube channel. That is it. That means I want it out there on my channel regardless. Right. You're the head of your channel. Right. Yep. Whatever goes on here, it's between you and me, right? That's not nobody in the chat can put a video in here. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out why would you put that on your YouTube channel if you can don't we, want it out there? But yet, we, when I talk about it? him and I talk about this program, I'm the hater. Like, mm. let's talk about 
So there's some quarterbacks in the in, a, in in the college football right now that deserve more that deserve some talking. Um, one of my former kids just was with his father the other day, Nico at Tennessee. Um, he got good amount of money for NIL. Um, I haven't seen any any crazy videos of him. Have you lately? Uh-huh. All right. Um, haven't seen that. Jackson Dart, he got a private jet deal on the NIL. Mm. Um, trying to figure out, okay, but I haven't seen like no stupid craziness. Like, I haven't seen him flossing or doing no shit. He got an NIL deal with it. So I'm trying to figure out what quarterbacks out there are every day in the limelight. That's all I'm trying to figure out because apparently I can't talk about him without being a hater, but this. This will, I'm sure, be shown on other people's shows today. Um, this 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 clip that we're going to show of him in class, everyone's probably seen by now. I'm just trying to figure out, like, I, I, you address the team, you address the team, talking about classroom behavior. What, maybe it was after this, but he posted it on his channel yesterday. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out, dog. It, why are you continuing to put your daddy, the head coach, in this limelight that he mm. has to constantly defend with this target on his chest? Why are you putting your daddy on constant eggshells defense mode when he has to now defend the rest of the team to the public to say, yeah, I addressed my team about classroom behavior. Your son is live in a lecture on IG Live, pumping it up as if it's the cool thing to do. Mm. I, I'm trying to figure it out. Am, am I wrong? The timing was bad. Go ahead, show it. Let's see it. That's, yeah, yeah, let me, let me watch it. It's sodium chloride when I'm done. And in sodium chloride, I have NH plus and CL minus. Solid days. It should in the aqueous phase, it gets NH plus and CL minus. When I go over to solid and aqueous, if anything is written in aqueous, there's water around it. You gotta remember that. Because sometimes water does things for us. The equation is often referred to as the molecular form of the equation. For electrolytes and the sodium chloride. Again, with the 110 and 8 plus 5 is 13, it's neutral sodium. And that's not true. It's sodium ions with a plus 1 charge. No free He laughing and shit. I, listen, the whole class kids, laughing. You know, he just yeah. Kids, I mean, kids fuck <laughs> up. Kids fuck up. There's kids. I've had tons of kids in class that's fucking done dumb shit, right? But yeah, Smitty, we got to stop defending the fact that he has the respect level for his father, his team, and here. Let me let me break it down. Let me let me say. It. Yeah, break it kids. down. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you we, go. Ahead. Go ahead. Break we it got down. kids that fuck up. We've been doing this. Uh, fuck up. We've always had classroom behaviors. You've seen my rants and videos at my kids. Yeah. So kids are going to be kids. Here's the issue, though. Nobody, see, we put this pedestal, we put this target on our chest. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. This is not, and I got to be clear here, that anyone that played the sport or coached it, and if they don't agree, then they're just idiots and they don't understand the profession. Damn. There is zero let me put, let me make sure I'm clear here. I'm you gotta say this right because you led. You said if you don't agree with this, you an idiot. So this got to be like oh, yeah. the Bible well, that, right that's, here. That's sticking. That's the guarantee. This got to be like perfect statement. Then you are not a receiver. You're not a corner. You're not a D lineman. No offense. You're not an O lineman. You're not a guy that really, if you walk into Walmart and without a helmet on, they recognize you. Meaning. One of the old linemen at Colorado walks into Walmart, I'm sure, unless he's really from Boulder, nobody knows who the old lineman is. Nobody knows who the D lineman is. Nobody probably knows who the Mike Backer is if he took his helmet off walking down the street. None of you will probably recognize him unless you really follow Colorado's YouTube channel. I don't know. Here's my point. There is nowhere in a quarterback's job description that – allows for requires or should be defended that behavior not in a quarterback's job description that's just not what we did not what we do why do you think that the leader of the team 
who is the one of the figureheads of college football right now as we speak, being the son of one of the most iconic football players of all time, who's now a coach. Why would you ever defend the fact that this cat is constantly on videos doing something that we make a video about? We're only making a video about him, Smitty, because it's there to make mm-hmm. a video about. If he didn't do this, we wouldn't even be talking about it today. And I bet, I'm sure there's a million shows today that's going to show this video of him. So then he posted on his YouTube telling me, as the quarterback, you have zero regard for reading a room. You cannot read the room. You're the quarterback. You're not the fucking running back. You're not anybody else. You are the quarterback. There's, there's no in our job description, Smitty, when I give out a quarterback manual, mm-hmm. NFL, college, high school, we don't miss class. You're a quarterback. You sit in the front row. You're the quarterback. Mm. Motherfucker's buried in the middle of the big ass lecture hall. Why are you in the middle of the lecture hall? Like, it's like you're a, it's like you're a, 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 a just a shitbird regular kid. Like you're just a regular cat. Nobody knows. You're like a sh- third string receiver. <laughs> like, mm. no, homie, you're a fucking Shadur Santa. You set the tone. There's no room for being late. There's no room for failing classes. You're the quarterback. There's no room for missing practice, weights, not being first in everything, not being first in there, not being the last one to leave. You are the quarterback. It is different. And the money and the market in the NFL tell you that you are different Mm. because you are the highest paid person in the world. You are the highest paid and most popular position in the world. You are the one that's the goat or the hero. You are not just some regular random slap dick wide receiver or some cornerback. You're the quarterback, the leader, the premier guy. You're supposed to be number one quarterback in the draft, according to certain people on this show. How do you continue to do that? Display those behaviors and then put it on your channel so now your dad's going to take the heat because he's the head coach son and he's your dad as well. So there's a, there's a, there's a double, what do they call that? Double ass sword. Double conundrum, double, a, 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 fuck, what's the word? But anyway, you're now, you're, you're now talking about your dad slapping him across the back, backhanded slapping him and the quarterback as your coach. So he's your daddy and your coach. And you're basically putting him in this, uh, in Tandre, yeah. You're basically putting him in this trick bag. I mean, no, there's no question about it that you're putting Dion in a trick bag as his son and quarterback. I'm trying to figure out why, if we talk about it, am I going to be a hater today on social media? Well, you said that very well. I'm actually not going to disagree with what you just said. Um, there is a different standard for quarterbacks. I mean, I, I played the game I mean, at high school, but especially college level, for sure, college level is a different standard. You know, my quarterback for the first half of my career was Keith Winning. You know, got drafted to play NFL for a little while. Um, different standard. He's got, He's out there throwing passes after practice. He's there early. He's a cat who, at least when I was there, never got in trouble. Now, again – he still hung out with his teammates. He still, you know, had some drinks and party with his teammates and his people. He was a part of the team for sure. It wasn't like he was holier than thou. But when it came to like taking care of business, he was a guy. You never had to worry about him failing a class and not being able to, you know, be like all the all the little things that you just got to do. You don't have to worry about that from him. You know what I'm saying? So I do agree that there is a certain standard for quarterbacks that's separate from everybody else because, like, let's be real. The position is the most important position on the field, so we can't. We need somebody who has a different maturity level, a different level of focus, et cetera, to lead these other men. So I get that. Um, and again, I'm not I'm not defending it. I think it was it was a bad, it was a bad timing, bad decision. Cause again, I don't know when the actual filming took place, but the fact that it was posted yesterday is like, damn, bro, like <laughs> your daddy just got done like ripping ass, you know what I'm saying, in the team meeting, and then you you just still post it. You said, fuck it, I'm posting it. 
That's like, my Dang. point. Like, that, that's, that's the, the bigger thing. I don't care about the actual action, honestly, because again, me being from a player standpoint, me being a student, like sometimes those big old lecture halls, man. You know, you just being a kid. That's just, that's just, I don't know. It's just part of it. But the actual decision to post it. It's like, dang, bro. Like that, that. It's just like you don't, you don't even care. You know what I'm saying? So. I, like I, I, like I want to, I want, like I want to make sure we're proactively thinking this out because the haters will come after me for saying that I'm a hater. So yeah. I want to be clear. Are they, they coming? <laughs> Regardless, yeah. JB. You it's posted, it. you posted this yesterday on your YouTube channel. Your daddy has a viral video of him addressing the team about classroom behavior, locker room mannerism, locker room discipline, trash everywhere, lockers being left unattended. And then you post it. I just don't see it, dog. I just don't see it, bro. I don't see it. Tom Brady, for a reason, talks to this kid about leaving the other outside noise away and becoming a quarterback. It's on video. We've seen Tom Brady on IG Live and Shador talking to him and saying, man, fuck all that shit with the Bentley and all that. Get into the lab with your pen and your pad. Right. Like, go get your bag in the manner that it's supposed to be getting. NFL quarterback, is that what you want to do or do you want to be a YouTuber? My career is over, Smitty. We do a show now. I do a show. You're much younger. You're gonna you're gonna have many careers ahead of you still because you never know. You're still thirty. I'm forty eight, so I'm chasing. This is it for me. I'm chasing. Uh, I'm chasing retirement now of some sort, whatever yeah. that may be. This kid's goal, I from everything I've read, is he wants to be an NFL quarterback. He wants to be better than Tom Brady, is what he said out of his own mouth. Yeah. This ain't. This ain't. I don't see this behavior being conducive for you being better than Tom Brady. First of all, you're not. But second of all, like this is this is I get that cringe vibe, dog. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's about it's about like me, 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 look at me doing what I do. I wanna be this clown. You're the quarterback, homie. I just don't see it. If you disagree, go ahead. I do not see any other there's just not a, a place in our job description. That, that allows us to do anything other than be the guy, not the other guy. You're not a, the other guy, dog. You're not the other guy. And in this case, being Dion, Coach Prime's son, um, and he's quick to come at someone on Twitter if you say anything. The Sanders kid. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, dog, it's, 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 it's crazy. So he's obviously wants this attention. And it's not about coach. It's not about playing no more. He's not playing no more. Like, look, the, every quarterback. There's there's been a shitload of. Look at Caleb Williams right now. The attention that he's receiving for his off the field antics. We'll call him that. I don't care what he does. I really don't. I don't care what he does. Because if he goes out and balls, nobody's gonna care about. You know, he'll have he'll have ninety percent people in his corner. He'll still have ten percent hate. He'll have ninety percent of his people in his corner. Defending him if he balls. If he don't yeah. ball, though, the cats that do defend him now, although they won't come out and say it, they will be backstabbing him. Mm. Just let me be clear. The 90% of his backers now, if he don't ball, will backstab him. And now will come out and say, I told y'all he wore pink, pink, pink uh, nails and pink phone case. All that shit will come out from his supporters now. Not right. even the hate. And if he don't succeed, then the hates will just be magnified. So don't start no won't be none, dog. I just don't understand that part of this generation. They they can start it all. And then these guys in Arkansas come at me yesterday, but then when I barked back and said, So I can I can't have an opinion no more. I don't know what happened to having an opinion. Um uh, don't know where that became hate. I it's an opinion. I don't know how that became hate. Uh, but apparently it has. And then when I bark back though, then I'm, I'm everything. I'm fucking this asshole. I'm the devil. Well, hold on. You literally came at me. I'm a big nose bitch. So if yeah. I go out there and make a video re- and I do a video right now about this cat that just called me a big nose bitch. Yeah. I- I'm the bad guy because I'm mean and bullied and you JB, you should have just left it alone. 
Why should I leave it alone? Because, JB, when you bark back, let's let's keep it a bang. When you bark back, it's like you... It's like a fucking... But, Smitty... Pit, like, you bark. That, my point, though, <laughs> don't start none, won't be none. I, I don't get it. So, so this is the problem we have right now. So we allow you to do what you want. We allow cats to talk shit. We allow cats to bulls talk whatever they want. But when you bark back too loud... You're the bad guy? No, nah, it shouldn't be that way. Because the, the person who barks first should be the person who, who who's the bad guy. You're just responding. But at the same I mean, time, it, you got to pick and choose who you respond to, JB. You can't respond to everybody because you get a lot of hate. Here's a problem that we have. See, this is the problem. I think that there's more dick writers in America in this world than truth tellers. And the mm. dick writers outweigh the truth teller. So when the truth teller says something about your favorite person that you dick ride, mm -hmm. you now call me a hater. So am I a hater or are you just a dick rider with big time goggles on and getting on your fucking knees opening wide? Two that things, can be, two things can be true, JB. Two things can be true. You can be a hater in some in some instances. And then there's also dick riders. I don't think your comment today about the phone, that's not a hater comment or hater statement. That's just a regular, like, that. that's true. That's, like, that's just a, that's an objective thing that you said about the quarterbacks and them having different rules. That's real. But there are certain statements that you make about Colorado that are very subjective and very opinionated. And it's very much, it's said in a way where it comes off as hate. And I'm your boy. I'm just telling you that. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. There's certain that, and I, listen, you go, can't, don't ask me for an example right now. We talk about a lot of topics on the show, and after the show, my fucking brain shuts down. So I have to go back and look and put and pout it. But I, I'm I'm confident I could put together like a thirty minute just reel of all JB stuff you said about Colorado. Okay, let me it, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah, I've been talking about Colorado on my show for mm -hmm. three years because they've been a bad program for three. Yeah, so they've been a bad program. Because my good friend was there, obviously. And I had three kids there. I had three players there. Chance Maine. I had, you know, uh, Delrick Abrams. Um, I had players there. So, of course, I'm invested in my players. Why wasn't I a hater the last three years when I said the coaching position there is a joke? And then my boy, DeSheverini, has to be the interim head coach there. I talked about it on this show several times. Well, I can't argue that I wasn't. I wasn't. Why too the wasn't time. I a hater then? I am. I'm asking the chat. I want to ask everybody. Why was I a truth teller then? But now I'm a hater. I'm going to be clear. But I want, you, I, I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question to everybody out there. I'm asking the question. I just want to get a question. Smitty, you weren't here, so it's not even relevant to you. I want to know why. I was a, not a hater then on a team that went one in 10 two years ago with Carl Durrell, who I said is the worst college football coach in the fucking America. Why wasn't I a hater? Why was I a truth teller? Number one, before that, they won four games, four games, five games, five games. And I said, this program should not be a four win team. Why was I a truth teller? Why, when I came out and said that my main man in the middle of the night, who just had a staff meeting with my boy Darian Hagan and the staff, Cheverini and others, and said, we are going to stay here. I'm staying. I'm not leaving. And in the middle of the night, Darian Hagan goes to his office, and the head coach's office is cleaned out. And he's now the new head coach at Michigan State. Why was I no hater when I called that a chicken shit move? And that's my boy even. I'm cool with him. We're tight. Now he's facing lawsuit and after the broad and all that. Why wasn't I a hater then? And then why when Mac, Coach Mac, won 10 games two times out of three years, and I said he's doing one of the best jobs in America, I was a dick rider when they won 10 games with Delrick Abrams, who left Indy, goes to Colorado. They go 10 games. They win the Pac-12 South. And I'm a dick rider because I said he's doing the best job in the country at Colorado winning 10 games. So fucking make it make sense, homie. 
Please make it make sense. I'm going to go back and get the receipts, get the videos. I'm going to show them so all these fucking dick riding fans of Dion in Colorado can look at my receipts for the last three fucking years and talk about, oh, shit. JB been saying this shit about Colorado and everybody's been cool. <laughs> now I'm the hater of all haters, homie, because they won four games. I wasn't here listening to those shows, so I can't tell you exactly, you know, the exact answer you probably want. But I will say this. You said three years. So that means like this year so far, last year, which was Dion's first year. And then the year before that was the 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 old coach. The year before Dion got there, they were one in ten, JB or one in eleven, whatever they were. They won one game, one in eleven, whatever. So it would make a lot of sense as to why you calling them shitty would bring on no hate because it was like it was right there. Like we all like we all saw that they won one game, so it would make sense. So like you, it's hard to you can't really compare that to what you're seeing now. That's number one. Number two, I think. Right now, we don't have a big enough sample size of Dion at Colorado to really go in either direction. I said this yesterday. I, I don't think fans should be saying this motherfucker is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but fans should also shouldn't be saying he sucks and he's shitty. He's a shitty coach. Don't know what he's doing. We don't, we don't know enough. You were actually last year, if I'm not mistaken, you were kind of on my side and agreeing that him winning four games was – was, was was solid all things considered all things considered you you, you no. wasn't you wasn't going you wasn't you wasn't saying it was just a shitty ass job by Dion like you wasn't necessarily saying that like you was like all right like I I I you've been you've turned around program so you you've been that situation I think your first year uh, at Kansas I think you won you won five games and yeah, next exactly. year you turned you turned things up so like there's yeah, there's it, a process of building yeah, things up. and I said that I said he's gonna have mercenaries, so this is gonna be a, a, process. a process. I didn't think he was gonna win a lot of games. Here's the problem. Right. Everybody keeps talking about the year that he took over for. They were one game winners. Carl yeah. Durrell's Carl Durrell's last year, they won one game. That matters. But everybody everybody's all on this. Well, we won one game, they won three more. He's a godsend. No, I see. I said on the show, if you go back and look at it, I said on the show that the last four years, they've literally won four games or more. So take out the one outlier they've lost. By the way, they were 1-11 in twice in the last 12 years. In that program, the last 12 years, they went, they've won one game twice. One in like 2012 mm -hmm. and one two years ago. Other than that, they won 10 games twice. They won 4-4-4, four, 5-5, four, four, five, five, 1, and 4 with Dion. So I'm trying to figure out why we just go to the one game and then we all we talk about, and then we're saying that he did some amazing job. I ain't saying all that. Uh, not you. I'm just saying that is the narrative. We, we just they Basically, he won the same amount of games that they've been winning over the last 12 years consistently on a consistent basis. So he basically he basically was par par for the course. For his first year, yes. Par for the course. No, yes. over the over the last 12 years, he is par for the course in that program. Four wins. That's what right. they win. Right. For year so, one, yes. So we took whole new taking, team. Whole but let's be honest. Right. He took him <laughs> we dog. Coach Mack won 10 games twice. I used to go up there all the time and, and clinic with him. He won two games, 10 games twice. And I didn't see him get a percentage of this fucking talk. And he won 10 yeah, games. Well, he's not being Not a that. percentage. Yeah. Not a percentage. Yeah. But when he lost and everyone talked about he needed to go, it was hate, hate, hate. Or it was what? Fact. This fact. He got to go. He won 10 games two years ago. He got to go. So he's got to get out. Nobody tripped, nobody bitched, nobody moaned. When I said it on this channel that Max was the best coach in football, he did a hell of a job at Colorado, changing that program, blah, blah, blah. Then a dude comes in there and basically cripples the program by leaving overnight after he mm -hmm. tells the staff I'm staying, goes to Michigan State for a bag, and then I'm sitting there like, okay, Carl Durrell? I don't get the hire. My boy Darren didn't get it either, et cetera, whatever. They go through the process there. 
They tagged Severini as the interim head coach uh, in between all this. That's how bad it, the program has been. We're going to have Chef come on the show next week. And then they go out and get prime Deion Sanders. Neon mm-hmm. Deion. Mm-hmm. And he brings rappers on the sideline. He brings all. He his brings sons. fans. He brings he money. Brings he brings on games. He brings, he brings everything. Yeah. Yes. So, and then <laughs> in the know, year one, hey, charging twenty racks to go to a dinner. Hey, yep. get, whatever, right? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Do you? But that overshadowed the fact, mm-hmm. the fact that they won four games. It don't overshadow it, JB. I just think we. Yeah, listen, on this, again, maybe I'm I'm tripping. I don't remember what we, what we talked about, but I'm pretty sure none of us, other than Matt, went in here thinking they were about to go fucking win eight, nine games in year one. That just didn't make sense. He had a whole new team, basically. Literally, all the transfers he had, all the players who left, all the transfers the he brought in. Time out, time out, all time I'm out. saying is that that that's that's insane to don't even, make like, excuses. Don't make excuses for the man that got the roster, homie. Of course, but I'm I'm saying it's part okay, of the process. So it's a about? process. It's, it's don't, not about don't, an excuse. Don't make it's, excuses, it's, 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 it's it's reality, JB. But it's, it's reality. It's not an excuse. Okay. excuse uh, you call it an excuse. It's reality. I'm just giving but you a fact of what, what it happened. Don't make excuses for the man who came out and said, "I'm gutting this roster." Yes, because the roster won one game the year before, JB. Of course, I'm yeah, gutting it because they. It, it don't matter. What, what, what he doesn't mean? get a pass. He don't get a pass. Homie, I I'm not saying give him a pass. I'm so saying on, it was year one. Did I get a pass for going two and eight my last year? You're, no, because it was – I'm oh. glad you brought that up. You know why? Because you went like this, JB. You went up, and then you went down, unfortunately. Don't and matter. you had some off-the-field stuff. Right? They were wrong, but I'm just saying all mm-hmm. that shit matters. I'm saying it's different when you go up and coming down versus going up. Right now, te- the, however you want to slice it. Technically speaking, he's trending up. That's what it is. Now, if next year, if next year he goes out there and wins four games again or wins three games and gets worse, trust me, best believe people are gonna be calling for his fucking job. But if he goes out there and he wins seven games next year, it's gonna keep going up. It's 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 the route in which you you see it in the NFL all the time with, with guys in their contracts. If, if a young guy, second year guy gets let's say he's a D lineman, he gets five sacks this season, and then the next year he gets seven. The next year he gets nine. Okay, well, he's going to get that big bag. But let's say he gets nine sacks his rookie year. But in the next year, he gets five. The next year, he gets three. The total might be around the same total. But the fact that he's trending downwards, he's not going to get that same bag, JB. So, again, that matters. Right now, he's trending up. That, that's what it is. He, it, again, it's one season. So, like, come on, bro. Like, I, uh, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't crown him or say, like, I mean, what should they do? Take his job away already? Like, I, I don't get what you're. Like, well, I, I don't. I don't get why you go so dramatic. I'm not talking about anything about getting him fired. He's starting over and all that. But stop meat riding him as a general public and not make him own the other shit that we see that we're doing a show on every single day because he's out in the limelight every single day putting that target on his players and himself, his staff, his coaching staff, his coaching staff. Besides Warren Sapp, okay? Mm-hmm. Besides Warren Sapp, mm-hmm. who's a GA, by the way. Yeah. Who is his staff? Because I'm just telling you, I talk to Division One coaches who think, uh, I'm not going to say what they think because it's just not fair. They look at this and they're like, who's his staff? Who wants to coach with Deion Sanders? He had a few Division One guys I knew last year that were good coaches that I knew, and they're no longer there after one year. And then I'm looking at the current staff now, and I'm sitting there like, who are these fucking guys? Who are these fucking guys? Why doesn't anyone want to go coach with him? Why you know, no pa- you know Pat coach? Shermer. Why Why no big, big time? Yeah, and Dion and his daddy played for his daddy. So yeah, look, you know, and, 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 he, and he had and he had Zimmer, who's one of the best defensive-minded coaches in the world. Now he got out of there in the NFL. What? Why? Who knows? I'm not saying he did. he loves Dion. I'm pretty positive on that. So I think though, when you love someone as a human, and then when you coach with them and find out that this may not be your get down, cats mass exodus as a professional. As a far, I'm talking in the profession. And I'm not hating or saying anything. I'm saying truly, if you're a Power 5 school with all this fucking money coming in and you have people riddled on the sideline of fame and fortune, 
and you can't get me a legitimate O-line coach that's coaching and been coaching D1 who's a go-getter, a recruiter, and a a, a, a nutty, gutty fucking O-line guy. You can't get me a fucking legitimate D-line coach at a big-time Power 5 school who just broke records on bringing in money. You can't get me a fucking legitimate big-time OC in D.C. Because you're prime, you're Dion. Everyone's been saying you can get whoever you want. Why am I looking at the staff and I don't know any of them? I, I'm looking at them like, why, why the fuck is he not grabbing a cat from Georgia or Bama? Or why is he not getting somebody that – and I'm sitting there like – There's multiple factors, though. There is multiple factors. I'm not saying – I'm not – I might not want to go to Colorado. I might not want to be under the limelight of prime. That's why I'm not assuming. I'm not assuming. Yeah. I'm not here to assume. <laughs> exactly. Why. We can't. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know why coaches left. All right. <laughs> let's take a let's take a commercial break real quick so we, I can get Steve Kim the link, Smitty. I got to get Steve Kim the link. Yeah, let's do commercial break. We're already 15, 20 minutes past anyway. Commercial break, yeah. Don't y'all go nowhere. We got special guests coming on. Sean King, Steve Kim, and a shit more loaded topics on the way. Make sure y'all join that winnable link. We need two more people. We got an hour and a half left for two more people. I'm waiting on y'all. See y'all in a minute. Peace. Man, so Pat's good friends with Trump. I had I, I saw a video the other day. He was out there in Jersey, and fucking Trump walked in with a red tie, and Pat's like, how fucking strong is that? And uh, I was dying laughing, man. Pat sent me the video. Uh, I'm going to be going to Boston with Pat next week or a couple weeks here um, for the live deal. But um, he, 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 you got a good relationship with him, huh? Daddy Trump, I love him. He's been like a dad to me. I, I've you know, it's amazing how if people, you know, it's that old saying, if you don't know somebody, then shut up about them. And, no shit. Um, he's one of the greatest human beings. The family's one of the greatest families I've ever met in my life. And, um, you know, what he's going through right now is just crazy. Uh, our country was in such great shape when he was there for four years. And now look at it. Yeah, no doubt. I, I the, Fucking Biden's son's on the Air Force One today and, and Trump shit got raided. I, I just look at it like. Holy shit, are they setting a precedent to do this shit to any and everybody here in the future? Because if you can raid a former president, which has never happened ever, they fucking better find some shit or they're gonna be we're gonna be fucked. They're not gonna find anything on Daddy Trump. He's he's one of the most honest human beings I've ever known. I mean, yeah, so he's had some bad bad business deals, but who doesn't? You know what? Oh, he's shit. come out strong. He's got great golf courses where the lives probably gonna make their home. Yep. Uh, yep. Which I don't blame Daddy Trump for when they kind of kicked the rally out through Cadillac, and it wasn't Cadillac's fault. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I just I can't understand why people are going after him so hard when he did he did such an amazing job for four years for our country. Well, look at you know people depict you know perceptions reality. I'm sure me and you can probably relate better than anybody how fucking people you know think how we are when they've never met us in their life. So you know. I just I find it crazy how people doing jobs that, uh, you know, have no idea on what we do uh, as a coach or a golfer and being a professional golfer, the top 150 in the world or whatever it is to get a card. And then they're going to sit there and talk about whoever. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, John Daly shot an 80, but he's one of one. Like, people don't get that shit. Like, Coach Brown, you're an asshole, but you don't know me. You know what I mean? So they've never right. met Trump. they never met any of these people. They always want to talk about it. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean. Well, for you, I mean, not getting paid what you probably deserve to get paid, taking care of those kids that are academically struggling from either Division One or even in Division Two. that, you know, and you're doing your job trying to get them academically ready and then, once they do that and they're playing great and they're healthy, they leave and you got to start over again. You've got one of the tough, toughest jobs I've ever seen in my life. And I enjoyed watching it. Let me tell you something. I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. You, you, you're freaking awesome, dude. I love you. So listen, you, you, uh, you won two majors, uh, what five PJ wins and what night you got 20 wins total or, or something like that. As far as the whole, uh, tour professional tour, you got 20 wins, I think. Um, all over the world. I don't know. I don't keep up with it. Yeah, I don't win. Win. So Let's how, put it this way. It, Coach, man. If I had if you had that record, you never would be coaching. <laughs> hey, you know what though? I equate it to baseball, man. You know these these hitters come up and these greatest hitters of all time, they bat whatever, 320, 310, 
But if you really look at it, it's really 0.31% because they take so many bats and they gave they give these high rankings. And I'm just like, dog, oh, baseball players really have a shitty hit to strikeout ratio, but but 300 is actually considered good. And uh, it's funny how perception's reality, man. How, how was winning that first tour, man? You come out as a youngster. I remember watching it, man, as a youngster on TV. And uh, I was our fan right away. I was like, this guy's different. He wants to, he's the fucking, uh, you know, the Adam Sandler of professional golf. When that movie came out, you were the guy that brought entertainment. But what, what, uh, what was that like as a youngster winning that first thing and everyone's finding out, okay, this guy's just not a long ball guy. He, he can play. It was, i tell you what, it was like a blur. You know, I didn't get a practice round. So I went right in there, got in there at 2 a.m. Cause I didn't know if I was going to get in the tournament and, Next thing I know, I'm in the tournament and win the damn thing. And I, I didn't know what to expect. And the funny thing is I found out it's a 10-year exemption on the tour and then five years in the majors, lifetime in the PGA. Wow. And I go, if I'd have known that, teeing up Sunday, I would have shot 95. Thank God I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, that's funny how that shit works. That's serious shit, man. I used to, The same shit's happened to me, man. I'm like, shit, that's, that is a psychological killer right there. So I... What up, what up, what up, what up? We back, man. We back. I think JB is uh, still getting his coffee. You know, he's in the mansion right now, so it's going to take him a little bit of time to move around. There he goes. There he goes. Finally back. I was the first one here, of course, as usual. Ah, man. What you looking at? Hold on. Hold it down for one minute. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to hold it down. Put me back on here, y'all. Put me back on here. Chat, man, what's going on, man? Y'all know I like to talk to y'all, man, especially when we... uh. Doing the show a little differently when JB's in Arizona and I'm holding it down, kind of taking the lead role. I like to talk to the chat. What y'all got going on today, man? It's Thursday. It's my last day of the week to work, actually. Uh, we had last Friday off from work at Fox. We got this Friday off from work. I think it's like some type of soccer or some type of event going on on the uh, on the channel where it's like taking over the hours in which our show will be on. So we, you know, we call it dark days in the industry. So today's my Friday. I'm excited to knock this thing out and be able to just enjoy another three day weekend, man. Do y'all agree with me for all the workers in the chat? Do you guys agree that it should be a four day work week with three days off versus this five, two schedule? I feel like whoever invented the five, two schedule is insane. Like what? What made you think that working five days a week with two days off should be the norm? Now again, there's certain jobs and careers which you know which you gotta work every day because you know if you're a doctor or a nurse or something like that, like it is what it is. But I think the norm should be four day work week. Again, it could be four tens or whatever. But Why get three days off? It's just a more balance of a schedule. I think you would have. I think employees would work harder knowing that they got that three days off. You know what I'm saying? It'd be more motivated. And I, I don't know about y'all, man, but when I get that, that third day off, when I do come back the following week, I feel just so much more rejuvenated and energized. Like I feel way better, man. I ain't gonna lie. I already do four tens and then there's too much. Now. There's too many, there's too many industries that make this earth world country operate that cannot work four days a week. Those are outliers. Those are you outliers. Won't have, you won't you won't have the luxuries. We won't have the luxuries um, that we get um, if you went to a four day work week. And why do we always want to change something? I mean, it sounds soft. There you go. There's the real answer. The <laughs> old heads never want to change anything. Oh, we do. We, we do change. Keep but. everything the same way it was back in back in seventy two. We used to use a thing called uh, white pages and yellow pages. We didn't know about no Googles. We had the pages, and that came in the 90s, and we just kept things off the camera, and we used to play hopscotch outside, and like, oh, that old shit. We're not doing that. We used to ride Camelback. We got cars now, JB. You motherfuckers are lazy. We used to take the stairs. We got elevators now, JB. I'm sorry that we, we've grown. I'm sorry. I know it's scary for you. 
You either grow or get left behind, JB. Contrary to, to your belief. I think, <laughs> I think it's soft. But anyway, you guys all want... Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme for less, less, less. Shaq, JB, <laughs> when he went out to like a Benny Hanna spot last night, had some like shrimp and rice. He sent me a video. I said, this is one of my favorite spots. It looks phenomenal. Like this is one of, like I love chicken fried rice, shrimp fried rice, etc. Y'all want, y'all know what this man said? Oh, that's soft. That's soft. I'd rather have a steak, a porter, a, a tomahawk steak, whiskey, no vegetables. That's soft. Shrimp fried rice is soft. That's his generation, y'all. Even the food you eat is soft. Yeah, we're making tomahawks tonight. That's a man's fucking meal. Tomahawk <laughs> and maybe like, what, corn? I don't know. You can't eat no tomahawk every day with some whiskey. You will we die don't need in vegetables. two weeks. We don't need veggie. Like, what the fuck is a salad? <laughs> Pat and I go, what the fuck's a salad? We, we don't need no salad. I, I love salad. We don't need water. The fucking body's 98% water. We got a whole argument last night with the 98% water. We, why don't we bleed? Why don't we bleed water? So how don't hold on time? Come on. If your body's 98% water, motherfucker, how do you keep it that way? How do you keep it that way? You why gotta, are we not bleeding? Why are we not bleeding? Why are we not bleeding water? <laughs> this dude sounds crazy right now. Our, our body 98% water. I don't need water. I need this, coffee. This is right. Hood. When it shows over, it's noon somewhere. And I'm gonna start drinking. Nine in the morning, you know, I'm like, nine in the morning, I'll start drinking. <laughs> Shohei Otani's interpreter set to take federal charges, allegedly clearing Otani's name. You see it right here, man. Uh, Hold on, time out, time out, time out. Not to interrupt you. Too late, you already did. Show Keith Smith. Latest fucking post. Oh, I see him right here. Right here. Keith Smith, my cousin. JB, you need to water. You need water and veggies for a well-rounded diet. He's not lying. That's true. That is true. Fact. It's my cousin. Shout out to Keith. Keith, join Winnable right now, Keith. You my cousin. Join Winnable right now. The paid plan right now. Oh, if you really my cousin. I'm fucking crying. Here's the link right here, man. Keith Smith, join I, you, my cousin. I defend you every show. I need you. I need you to join the team right now, man. Once you in, the only way you, the only way out is in the box. So come on. I'm crying, homie. Uh, Why are you crying, homie? Keith is giving me dietary advice. Keith, this Keith. Is giving me dietary advice as if he's fucking on Jenny Craig. You wobble body fat fuck with titties to your kneecaps is giving me dietary fucking advice. What the fuck is the world going to? What? What? Keith? <laughs> Am I fucking? Motherfucker gotta walk like this, holding his titties, and he's giving me fucking dietary advice. His fucking titties are holding his palm down, and I gotta fucking hear it from him. Keith, shout out to you, Keith. But if you don't get on a diet water plan ASAP, and I need you to literally take my advice. I need you to drink a gallon of diet water a day and a bag of pretzels. That's it. I don't want you to go to Baskin Robbins. I don't want you to go to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Burger King, all the shit you eat every day. Your cholesterol skyrocketing through the roof as we speak. I need you to get that down. Your triglycerides, your triglycerides are fucking just peeking through your sore. Your, your your pores are screaming garlic and mashed potatoes. And I do not want to walk by you and smell garlic mashed potatoes seeping from your pores. Your nipples excrete Pepsi. You give out Pepsi from your nipples. 
that because you are literally the worst looking person in this chat, you should not ever give dietary advice again. And please take no disrespect. <laughs> this dude, Keith, just came in here and gave you some real life advice. What he said was an actual fact, a well-rounded diet, including water and vegetables. And you just went on a seven-minute rant talking about he's he's seeping garlic mashed potatoes and Pepsi throughout his pores and nipples. And then you decide to end that rant with saying respectfully. I had man, to come do, on. I now. had to use one of your words because respectfully. This dude is this thing, man. But speaking of respect, man, one of the guys I respect the most on this show, man. Uh, living legend himself, the the walking encyclopedia, the man of the hour, the one and only Steve Kim. Bring him on the show, y'all. Clap him up. For Good Steve morning, Kim. fellas. Good morning. Hello, How Steve, you doing? Up, Steve? Uh, Steve, I appreciate you. Uh, I had to get that shit to you later. I was like, get Bailey, give me the link. I'm in Arizona with Pat. Um, let me ask you something. Shadur Sanders is in classroom uh, oh on IG Live in the lecture hall. Oh, my God. I, I, it, Okay, so we do shows. Whitlock, we, we, we everybody does a big show. And we do shows based on content. Whatever you put out there, we do it. That drives podcasts. It drives YouTube algorithm. That's why they show it on shows. Why am I the hater when I show this guy every day? He gives me the content to put on the show. Why wouldn't I show it? So someone else will show it, right, Steve? Well, a chef can't cook without ingredients. <laughs> I mean, so I, mean, I don't get it. I I don't understand why he'd be filming that. I mean, most lectures are pretty boring, but uh, again, they do things a certain way over there, and you know, guys like us are uh, ex not only expected to accept it, but to embrace it. And my view is, no, I, I I'm not going to accept or embrace it. I think personally, as a professor, I I would say all phones get turned off or no recording of the lecture, uh, unless it's for educational purposes. You're not live streaming it. You're not going to put it up on social media. But again, it is a different era. But uh, that's the way they run their program. And as you like to say, you either coach it or you allow it. And obviously, it is allowed. Smitty? You know my take on it, JV. Hey Steve, I, I came on the show two, three years ago. Uh, I have, I have, I have receipts. I've always talked about Colorado on my show for one reason. I, my best friend was there, Darren Hagen. Uh, I had four players on the roster there. Uh, Coach Mack, before he got let go, had won ten games twice. I uh, went up there. I used to clinic with him all the time. I had four players there playing under Mack. They won ten games twice in a three-year span. Pac-12 South champs. And I said, you know, he's doing the best job in the country. Uh, to turn around a Colorado program that's basically been a four to five game winner uh, over this 12 years from 2012 till now, basically for the par for the course has been four to five victories a year. So Dion won four last year. I said it's par for the course for that program. There you, they always go to the one win season the year before he took over, and they're saying it's such a great job. And I'm like, well, actually, it's par for the course. He did take over a bad program, but so did Mac when he took the job over. Yeah. Uh, they also had won one game prior to him taking the job. Back then, I was a truth teller. Now, I'm a hater. So I'm trying to figure out how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, look, there's a double standard and there's a no standard. Look, I remember when... Coach McIntyre was at San Jose State. He did a really good job. And I said, that guy's going to move up. You could just tell. And then you give him a little time at Colorado, got that thing going. And I was surprised when they got rid of him after a couple of down years. Because I don't know if Colorado's that program anymore, like in the late 80s to mid 90s, where they could just reload, where they could lose first round draft choices and immediately come back and still say, you know what? Even in a down year, we're going to win nine games. Uh, the landscape has changed for Colorado. The landscape has changed in college football. And I, I want to see, look, the one thing I want to see from Dion is how long is he going to stay? Is he out of there as soon as Shadour and Hunter exhaust their eligibility or go to the next level? Because, look, I thought last year was really good for Colorado in terms of the publicity. 
the recognition that he brought to the program. But I, I'd, like, I'd like to see if he could plant his flag somewhere and just develop a program for the next five to six years and say, okay, I did this. Like, am I going to leave this? This is the mark of a good coach in my view. Did you leave the place better than when you found it? Mm. Really that simple. That, that's the strength of Jimmy Johnson. He did that everywhere he went. Oklahoma State, University of Miami, Dallas Cowboys, even the Miami Dolphins. He left those places better. So let's see if Deion Sanders, he did that at Jackson State, very short run. But then by the time he left, when everyone else transferred along with them, you know, things haven't really been the same. But I want to see at Colorado that whenever he leaves, that the Buffalo fan base could say, you know what, Deion, thank you. You set us up for the next five years. I yeah. want to see if he can leave that mark. What's It'll be tough. News? It'll be tough. But we got some breaking news real quick, y'all. Um, OJ Simpson has passed away. Bring the what? tweet up. OJ Simpson, the family. This is the this is this is his Twitter page. It said his family. This is family. I guess put the tweet out on this actual. I'm trying to double check to make sure we're saying the right. This is his actual page for sure. It says on April 10th, our father uh succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asked that you please respect yes. their wishes for privacy and grace. I didn't even know. Maybe I'm tripping. I, I don't. I didn't know OJ was even battling with cancer. I'm probably late to the party. Um, but wow, this kind of a shocker Jeez. to me. Yeah, you know, Darnell. Every time he did one of those tweets, and he'd always put up a video, he, he looked in good shape. I didn't say to myself, "Wow, he's really battling something health wise." And the other thing is, he always seemed to be in very good spirits. And I'm not right. making a judgment on his past, what he's done, what he was as an individual, but. It was so funny because anytime O.J. Simpson came up on my Twitter, I'd do two things. Number one, I'd retweet it. And number two, I'd go to the reactions because he always right. got a lot of reactions. But his overall mood seemed to be, hey, I'm glad to be alive. I'm living a good life. And uh, excuse me, I got to go back on the 10th hole of golf. Yeah, I know so, J.B. has joked about like, when I joked, was talking about trying to get him on our show at some point. I know he he, he was on uh, – that Cameron and May show uh, like a couple, yeah. couple months ago, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't uh, he's know. I mean, a regular guest, he's a regular yeah, like guest. a regular guest. He uh, he'll be one of the most polarizing figures when it comes to figuring out his legacy. Yeah, one of the all time great running backs. If you put him in the Mount Rushmore, I would not disagree. He he was a a generation ahead of his time athletically, one of the most beloved figures in pop culture prior to June of 1994. I mean, everybody knew him from coast to coast, white, black, Asian, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist. We all loved OJ. And then it changed on one fateful night. And for anyone that's a younger generation, let's say Smitty's age or older, I would suggest watching that five part 30 for 30, OJ made in America. It really tells the story of Mr. Simpson and the intertwining of his celebrityhood, his athletic prowess, and his role in shaping modern day culture. Because I, I thought that's one of the better 30 for 30s ESPN produced. I'm trying, I'm gonna, I just want to make, hopefully it's real because a lot of people, Caleb Williams got his Twitter hacked yesterday as well. I want to make sure. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm hope. I mean, this is his actual Twitter, though. But like you said, maybe it got hacked. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on it to make sure I'm, you know, I'm watching and I'm. If this, if it comes off as comes out that it was fake or something, I'll, I'll say something, but or I'll put something I, I, out. Because I haven't, I've yet to hear, and I'm uh, that he had cancer. I never, nobody. Knew that's that. what I'm saying. I didn't either. I never and heard I mean, that either. You could have cancer. I mean, we saw a boy die. The actor, what's his name? Uh, yeah, from uh, Bla um. But you know what, Coach? I actually respect the fact that that. And again, I don't follow OJ. I just retweet him. Maybe he kept it private. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, mean, I, I don't know, I, and I respect that because I don't think no, everything do needs too. to be advertised. You know, I do too. I do too. I'm trying to figure out, like, because my dad died of cancer. You know, I got fucking cancer running my family. Okay, it's no, like, I think it, it's real, Jay, because like TMZ, New York Post, like they're act, like now it now it's like yeah, yeah, it's rolling. I, now. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. What I'm saying is, uh, rest in peace to him. But uh, that's crazy. Damn. Like cancer usually riddles the body. Like you're usually not able to go on shows and look normal and hold your weight. I, I, that's unbelievable to me. I just saw him on camera on May show two weeks ago. I, I was yeah. trying to figure out. 
I'm, you know, my uh, my greatest OJ memory, I'll never crazy. forget. I was working at this baseball card shop, uh, the Sports Gallery in Montebello, and I was watching. Uh, it was game five of the 94 NBA Finals, and I loved the Lajuan. I really liked that clutch city. I'll never forget. First, it was, okay, uh, OJ and Al Cowlings are carpooling. I'm like, okay, that's nice. They'll get them. They'll run out of gas. Then it became, the NBC was showing the game. Then it became a little box with the white Bronco. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. He'll, again, he'll run out of gas. And then they said, okay, we're going to go into this. We'll, we'll come back to the game. And I'm like, oh, come on, Jesus. And then it became, you know what? The game. OJ's on the run. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. This is game five. We're tied up at two. And next day, you know, all that happened. And the Knicks took a 3-2 lead. That's that's the only real coverage of the whole OJ trial, if you want to call it, that I watched, believe it or not. Is he is he as iconic as Muhammad Ali? No, well, no, that no one's as iconic as Ali, Michael Jordan. But I'm just, telling you. I'm just saying, like, with everything that he did as far as, well, like... Yeah, prior to 1994, all the movies he did, Naked Gun, he was hilarious. But it's really the Hertz commercials. I where he was paired up with Arnold Palmer. So he had black and white, two guys that you'd love to spend time with, you know, at the bar. You'd love to meet them. They seemed so friendly. And OJ seemed like the friendly, everyday guy jumping through the airport to get to his rental car. And I'm like, wow, what a guy, Orenthal. And I only mean iconic. I don't mean iconic as far as like you know popular. You know what what Muhammad Ali stood for. You mean overall, just everything. Well, in terms of his cultural popularity, yes. Well, or infamy, like like hate or love, right? Just everything. Yeah, infamous, infamous, popular, all that. Yeah, I I I, I don't know if he's quite that large, but right below the Ali, Michael Jackson, Pope level. I, I believe I the, I believe the high speed there. chase. Uh, I believe the high speed chase in '94. I was entering college. I believe the high speed chase was still to this day the most watched event on live television history. Right? Yeah, I, I, it's probably up there. And, I, and I, I'll never forget the image of people lining up, getting off their cars and freeways <laughs> on the and freeway. Was, and I'm like, bro, guys, keep the traffic moving. Come on, people. <laughs> There's a lot of people that actually don't give up about it. Can can we keep the traffic moving? This is garbage. And I, I'll just I was so pissed off that I missed Game Five because it was a back and forth game, and the Knicks kind of took it over in the second half at the Garden. And my, my view was, oh my God, the Rockets aren't going back to back. What a, or, or they're not going to win their first time. I love the Lajuan. Lajuan's probably my favorite non-Laker, not named Michael Jordan. Um. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I got to go back to the sun. They, they remade, <laughs> Smitty, Ford made a new car in the uh, Bronco in yeah. his because of him. Let's make no mistake about it. Uh, I just looked it up. Just, it said it says about, about 95 million was watching it worldwide. Is that's that, a Super Bowl rating. That's crazy. 95 million? Oh, yeah, bro. That was live. That's insane. Uh, we I mean, were joke, hey, remember this joke, Coach? Um OJ and Al Cowlings were with the most famous white Bronco this side of John Elway. I mean, there was a bunch of jokes. Hey, he left. The, the, everybody left watching the Nick game, Smitty. The, the NBA Finals just plummeted, and because well, we didn't have a choice, they switched it off. NBC. They, yeah, they plummeted. locked out. They locked down a TV channel. Oh, here. and also another thing that I would recommend for a thirty thirty. I've watched basically all of them. They did a day, Smitty. Because I'll never forget this day. It's called, and the title of it is June 17th, 1994. Because that's the date when it happened. Yeah. Uh, I believe the Rangers had their uh, Stanley Cup parade. Ken Griffey was ripping shots. There's all sorts of things that happened this day. Arnold Palmer, believe it or not, ironically played his last major. And mm. so ESPN did this hour-long thing where they spliced in news footage from the whole day, from the beginning to the end, how it ended up. Very dramatic stuff. I might actually watch that later today. You should watch it, Smitty. June 7th, 1994. I was six months, by the way, when this happened. Yeah, you should watch that. I was six months. It it was a surreal day because they put this music. And I kind of remember where I was at certain times. I actually remember the job I had at RPS loading boxes in the morning. I remember um, going back home, working out. I remember being at the shop watching the game. It takes me back to a very, very interesting time in American history. 
Hey, Steve, it, that from 90 to around 95 was a huge, it was a, but it was a whirlwind because we had a desert storm. My brother was in, Yeah, we had the Rodney King riots that, you know, all the, 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 the hidden, uh, the crouching tigers, hidden dragons were on the store. Oh, we had to get up on the roof. On the roof. We had to take the sniper positions like it was the 38th parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. It was a five-year run in L.A. was wild, Smitty. Uh, riots were like crazy. But that's a Juco legend, by the way. Let's make no mistake about yep. it. Shout San Mateo, out right? San Mateo uh, High and went out there. That, but no, San, San Francisco City. Yeah, but he went to – I think he – well, he was in the Bay Area. But let me just say this. O.J. Simpson's ability to keep his track speed on a football field mm. but still run tough inside – is unparalleled to this day if, Joe, if you took the prime version which is like his third or fourth year with the electric company up front in buffalo he would be an athletic freak today him and he eric really dickerson, would eric be. dickerson him and eric dickerson i yeah. believe were the tallest longest striders uh that i've ever seen adrian peterson came later in little semblance but those two were both six three two thirty yeah it, 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 the, he was unbelievable to watch. The, it, is he the best Buffalo Bills? Uh, right well, he's, yeah, I would say so. I don't know how many people want to admit it now. But again, let's go through our updated in remembrance of the Juice Mount Rushmore. It's the Juice, Jim Kelly, hmm. I'd Sorry. say the Terminator, and of course, Bruce Smith. Andre I think those Reed. are the best four. Andre Reed, yeah. Reed's a good one. Reed yeah. was outstanding. Daryl Talley. Um, Reggie McKenzie up front. There's a lot of, but but those four to me really stick out for Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, and I know one guy that's not going to make it, Stephon Diggs. Anyway. Hey, uh, Steve. I, <laughs> <laughs> Steve's crazy. <laughs> it was funny that you caught on the other day, right when Matt and I got into our thing and it went viral on the social media. Um, <laughs> it, I'm trying to figure out like this whole thing, in Colorado. So. Oh. Sean King's coming on next, and he said that this is a lateral build. He, he thinks it is. He, he thinks that Dion's gone after the year. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to figure out his daughter. And I just want to ask you this question: yeah. His daughter entered the portal two days ago. Do yeah, you think I saw that's that. an indicator that he I, is. Out? I was surprised. I, I mean, look, unless she's some big WNBA prospect that feels as though she needs more minutes, I, I was surprised she would. And again, I don't know her reasons, and she's certainly allowed to make her choice. But here's the thing, though. Let, let's say Mr. King is correct, and he might be. You know this, Smitty and Coach. As soon as he, as Coach Prime says, I'm out of here, you're going to have 60 players enter that portal from, from the Buffalo program. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, good grief. That's, I, I, if as, a, as a Buffalo fan, I would not be happy with that. I'd be like, bro, you just you just carpet bag just. Let me ask you I, this, though, Steve. In this, in this new you know, pay for play error. Let's say Dion stayed for ten years. Whenever he does leave, that's going to happen. That's going to happen regardless. Life. I'd be like, that's an investment. You 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 planted your flag here. I would respect it. But I guess my I feel I guess my point is that the kids are going to leave regardless. They are. Look, April fifteenth is what I. If I'm a college football coach, I'd call it. This is tax day because that mm. portal is opening up. And you already have kids like Damian Martinez, highly productive running back at Oregon State. He's fishing. He's fishing for some NIL offers, and I think Miami will be in play. But I I'm with you on this. Uh, but if a coach puts in 10 years of his life, I would have to say, you know what, Dion, you tried your best. Yeah. Whether I agreed with everything he did or not, that's irrelevant. But if you only stay two or three and you leave as soon as your son and D Travis Hunter leave mm -hmm. and you cause a mass exodus along with it, I'm not going to lie to you. I would feel aggrieved as a CU fan. That's just me. Uh, mm. Let me ask you your take on this, as, a, as a historian. I, I know you and I don't watch college basketball no more. Uh, we used to watch it. I used to love watching it just from a every team. I'd watch it like. Smitty, when college basketball was at its precipice, it would be on Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday. Big Monday. And Big Monday was a huge day. You, you get a Syracuse-Georgetown matchup. You get a, you know. And UNLV at night. UNLV at uh, 9 p.m. Yeah. College basketball was unbelievable. My question to you is this. Calipari, who sent 
a, a massive uh, NBA talent uh, on at one and done. He's the guy for one and done. He brings Anthony Davis, Booker, John Wall. He's had a, a million people that go through there and are in the NBA having success. Um, he just left out of nowhere, it seems, goes to Arkansas, a SEC opponent. What, what is your take with that? Like, what do you get out of that? Like, well, no, we never used to see that leaving in the same conference and taking another job. But he just got the Arkansas job, and, and he had this to say. You know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. <laughs> like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. <laughs> So now I got to – Hunter's really extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. Huh. There's no yeah. team. There's one oh. – I'll one thought of a team, we're roster. good. <laughs> I, I, here, here's the thing that – I, I respect Coach Cal, but here's the thing. If the whole one-and-done thing claimed out for you at Kentucky because of lack of continuity and you got to hit on every guy, you got to make sure every guy's actually an Anthony Davis type of level guy or John Wall – uh, how's that? Are you sure you could, you could just like pick up and just change scenery to Fayetteville and all of a sudden it's going to work again? Can you really turn back the clock a dozen years? I think this shines off the apple when it comes to Calipari. I really do. And I, I'm happy that it looks like Dan Hurley's going to stay where he's at, which is Camelot, because um, he's got that thing rolling. But look, there are questions about Calipari's ability to actually coach the game of basketball. There's no doubt about his ability to procure talent. So he's a recruiter. But I look at Dan Hurley when I watch those two games, that semifinal game with you, Coach, and Monday night, I saw a team that's actually very well coached. They play a good system, high handoffs with the weave. They share the ball. They make the extra pass, very smart with the basketball, and they play for each other. And those kids seem invested within that team. Doesn't mean they're going to stay four years, but they play for one another. The way Calipari has done it, I think all of that has been an issue at Kentucky the last couple of years. Yeah. He, in, in this, as this transition is getting, we, I'll call it worse. Uh, people can call it pay for play, whatever we're going to say about college. Is he not the perfect fit, though? Is he? I, if he was, if, look, Kentucky is the bluest of blue bloods. And Arkansas is a real athletic program. They spend money. They're in a major conference. They have a history. Even in basketball, they have sent guys to the NBA, right? But I don't know. If it, it, did it just get that stale in Kentucky? I don't know. Uh, to me, Cal, sometimes you just run out of gas. You lose your touch. We're going to figure out. And if you need a whole new team, um, okay, is Sidney Moncrief walking through that door? Is Todd Day walking through that door? Is Oliver Miller able to fit through that door? We'll see. Mm. I, I broke it on this show when it happened on the last the, earlier this week, and I said, look, Walmart, Jerry Jones, and Tyson Meat Plant, Chicken Processing Plant, Food, Tyson Foods, is giving him big money. And uh, – He's going to get $5 million a year NIL, which would be tops in the country, apparently. Mm -hmm. it, like, he can now, I guess, bring in Anthony Davis last minute when you're paid to play, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if these kids can take five or six months of Fayetteville, yeah. I, I'll never forget Teofimo Lopez, uh, when he won the fighter of the year, he and his wife at the time, and I don't know if they're together again or not. That's a complicated situation. I did an interview because his wife was from Jonesboro, Arkansas, and he was going to move out there and he's going to build a gym. He's going to do a, he's going to do all his training camps. So me and my wife are going to build a family in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So I did the interview in early December. He's the Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. Coach Smitty, by the time the story came out, he had moved from Jonesboro, Arkansas. So, and again, yeah. I'm not trying to disparage Arkansas or those fine people, but <laughs> it, I don't know. Is it really a destination for anybody long term that's not from Arkansas? I That's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, but you think about, I mean, can you say, and I haven't been to either location, so I'm just using this as an example, but. Comparing it to what Dion's doing, though, in Colorado, people, uh, kids don't just want to go to Colorado just to go. But I'm sure they don't. But 
look, and Arkansas has a real athletic program. They've had a lot of great athletes. I'm not saying that. But we're talking about high schoolers that can go anywhere in the country. Yeah. Um, but that's the question, though. You're right, Smitty. Let's say, let's say you can go to a Carolina or let's say a UCLA, which has the most beautiful campus on the West Coast, right? Yeah. And let's say the Bruins offer you two hundred thousand. You're just like, oh, I'm a one and done. Two hundred thousand, hang out, look at the scenery, look at the talent. Oh my God, it's Westwood. But and all of a sudden, Calipari says, "Son, what are you getting there? Two racks, huh? Half a mil. Ooh. Now you have to. Now you. Now you have a decision to make. Now you have a decision to make. It's like, man." Is that three hundred thousand worth not being in Westwood, and I'm not going to be here past April? Of the that decision is made, uh, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there for one semester, not even a whole year. Think about that; these kids are one and done. A lot of yeah, so, it's a semester. Yeah, we're, I'm out. We're, we're ruining college sports. It's crazy. I just don't. It's unbelievable. I, Musselman left that beautiful campus in Arkansas. Gorgeous campus, beautiful stadium right on the campus. I've been there many times. I sent twelve players there. Rakeem Boy led the SEC in rushing. Uh, but he left to go to USC for a reason. Let's just be honest. Um, listen, there's guys making videos of me, Steve, this morning uh, from, from Arkansas. I'm, I'm a hater, all this guy. This guy, this guy's dad is also his brother. Make that make sense. I don't get it. But anyway, um, it's... There's a lot of backwood. Okay, as a uh, as a uh, uh, Dave Chappelle would say, as a uh, little John, his dad's his brother. Okay, <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? <laughs> but I, I, before you get out of here, Steve, I got to ask you on the other side of things. You inherit a program in college, the college landscape as we speak. I take a new job, and there's there's one person on the roster. He'll never play there for Cal. That's not good for college athletics. I'm sorry. A whole team leaving when a coach leaves or what have you, just not a good deal. Um, Don't leave there. Uh, but I'm, but that's the point. They well, are. The genie's out of the bottle. You're not stopping it. I, I, you know, I was on a space last night, and the discussion became, how do you deal with the portal and the NIL? I have some ideas. If you made me commissioner, I, I would make letters of intent, multi-year contracts. I'd also tie in your current NIL deal with the school that you originally signed it with. You just can't transfer it over. I'd also put in a rule so that you can't leverage your old program that if you put your name in a transfer portal, you can't go back to that school. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you're not allowed to just say, hey, guys, I love you, but I want to put myself in the transfer portal. But if I don't get a better NIL deal, I'll come right back. I'd be like, no, that door's closed. Look, The Iowa kid that left Alabama and came back and then he went back. I, I don't crazy. get it. I would have never took you back, number one, as the coach. I, I just don't understand right. this whole letting them do what they want to do. I just don't get it. I, that's just not hierarchy. It's not how they And, and another thing I would do to protect kids that just want to actually get their education, if they're good students, and then they realize, look, I got a college scholarship. It's the farthest I'm going to go. I still made it farther than 98% of the people that ever laced on a pair of cleats. If a team or a coach wants to move you out for better talent, I think that player should have the option to say, okay, put me on an academic stipend. You don't what? even have to have me on the foot. Let me finish out my degree. I, I, I do have I do have some a lot of sympathy for kids that just want to be there, finish it out. They have not caused any problems. They should not be forced to get out of that school. So they should be allowed to have some sort of stipend. It's like, you know what? I'm going to stay here as a student. I'm four degree, four units away from getting my degree, and I can move on with the rest of my life. You have to have protection for everybody involved to make this really fair. Cal- Calipari's won everywhere. UMass, where did he go? Memphis? He went to, yeah, Memphis. and he could have won. He went to the final four with UMass one year. Should have won it in Memphis if they would have hit some free throws. Won one in Kentucky, which is the one program I thought, you needed to have another championship, more than one. Um, yeah, and so, look, he's been a very good coach. He's been an incredible recruiter, but I, I don't know. You look at Danny Hurley. Danny Hurley looks like he might have a dynasty. Who's going to take Drew. Kentucky? Oh, isn't it going to be Drew? Is it? I guess. It's, uh, look, that's the toughest job in America. You want to Bri- talk about Bryce Drew? Drew? Bryce Drew? Yeah, I believe that's his name. Is he um, a big enough name for Kentucky? Well, I don't know. Can, should they should they call back Rick Patino? Sometimes I mean, you go. Sometimes you got to go back to what you lost. 
But you know, that's, that's a reason. But you guys, a reason why you left. You left her. Don't forget about that, JB. He you didn't know, leave her. He didn't leave her. He did for the Boston because he thought he was going to get Tim Duncan, and I thought that was the dumbest reason. You're going to leave a great job because you think you might get a ping pong ball, and then when every time Rick Pitino says, "Well, you know, we didn't get Tim Duncan," you will never guarantee Tim Duncan. You, you, and Rick Pitino, if you look at that roster that he had left after they won the title, uh, and then they lost in the back-to-back game to Arizona, he actually recruited the roster that Tubby Smith won the national title with in 98. He was ready to be the modern-day Wooden, and he left it, but he made a lot of money. So was the money worth the legacy? Because he was going to make money at Kentucky. The thing about that Wildcat job is, you want to talk about a rabid fan base in sports that cares about that team every single day? Kentucky is right up there. They care and love about basketball like no other. Uh, we made, I made a mistake. It's Scott Drew, the Baylor head Scott coach. Scott Drew, okay, it's yeah. Scott. And yeah. apparently he's making a statement that he's staying at Baylor. Well, good that's for what, him. That's what good. he's saying. That's what, that pop, usually that means I'm going to Kentucky. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, Steve, I appreciate it. I'm in Arizona all week, and then I'll uh, I'll get back this weekend, and uh, I might be out your way this weekend. I might I might I might so I might try to get Smitty out to Venice Beach. Huh. For what? Sunday. For what? I met you. Have you been to Venice Beach? Yeah. On a Sunday? No. Oh, uh, well, maybe you'll learn some things. Huh? Sure. Well, I need to know uh, more Steve, information. I appreciate you jumping on, Steve. I'll, I'll All right, you. fellas, talk to you. Have a great All weekend. Right, yeah, Steve. Later. See, I'm from the hood, JB. I don't know where you from, but, like, we don't just run, walk into a setup. You're not going to just set me up. I don't know what you, you know what I mean? You you, you, you affiliated with certain organizations. Respect. I, I'm, I'm not, I, this ain't my hood, so I can't just be going in certain places. You been to Venice Beach, Cup? You been to Venice Beach, homie, on a Sunday? You, you going to find out. Like, I don't know what that means. I don't. You know what I mean? I need more information. <laughs> huh? We're going to have a good time, chill. We're going to go to Venice Beach. I'll, I'll show you. I'll t- I'll, I'll, I got you. Now, it's not your homie if he tell you go set you up, homie. That's not a That's not a homie. <laughs> that's true. That's real. That's real. JB the real. JB the real. Many out here walking on eggshells, boy. Because yesterday I said something. I said something about uh I said, man, LA, I'm comfortable out here. Woo, woo, woo. I'm an eagle. Woo, woo, woo. And I had homie try to press me yesterday. I had to, I had to uh yeah. Where? I was walking down uh where's that planet fitness at? Over there by Vines. Press you like how? He's not watching JB show yesterday. I heard watching JB show no, this morning. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face. I tried to keep it straight. Because I, I thought it was just on some real GP shit. Because I was like, be careful out here now. You still out right? I know where you live at. It's kind of in some areas over there. Yeah, uh, man. You got some oh. eyes over there. You're Crenshaw right up the street. Yeah, um, I'm very comfortable, very comfortable out here. Sean King will be joining us next. Um, I can't see the chat or nothing. But Sean King will be joining us next. Uh What's Can next we, on the docket? I got yeah. I got, there's another topic. I want to show a video though, uh, Bailey. If you can get the video of uh, me yesterday following Pat. Uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you driving doing that? No, 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 no. We were oh, coming oh. from Eaton. We were coming from Eaton. Oh, okay. Very affluent area of Scottsdale. Uh, and I was driving, and then and, and then we were talking about old school stuff, and we were talking about some. Okay, okay. And okay. then I was like, with a white one, a white one like this. And then I was like, um, Scott Drew officially turns down Kentucky to remain at Baylor. Breaking news, Damn. according to Pete Thamel. So letting you know that right now. Um, so I was bumping some uh some old school. Bailey's gonna put it in if you can find it. Uh some old school Lil Kim and 50 magic stick. I got the magic. Hit once, I can hit twice. I hit the bad. I, po- I posted what? it on social media and uh, I got quite I got quite a uh, response from the ladies. Ooh, what type of response? 
Um, uh, anyways, okay. moving on amicably. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Bailey, you got the video? 30 okay. seconds. It'd be in 15 seconds. Bailey, don't mess around. I can't, I can't see nothing. Well, because you're not I'm locked in, you're not like you don't take this show seriously. Like this show isn't that important to you, so it's okay. I can see on my it. phone. I, on my phone, though, the way it's landscaped out to get the camera, so I can't see no comments. Should have brought your laptop to Arizona. No excuses. I don't want to hear no excuses right now. You should have brought your laptop. Unprofessional, not prepared. Look at you. Service. People calling you out. See, this dude's not locked in, y'all. I was nobody called me. It was I lost I lost service or something. You can't oh, lose that? service. You at that? that house. Who's that? We got copyrighted right there. The show's over. Thanks a lot, uh, Bailey. No money. Um, can't monetize now. <laughs> no pay for Bailey. Wait show. We might turn this shit off now. Bailey, no pay for you this month. Good job. No, turn this Thanks off. For showing me. Thanks for showing that video. Um, Shout out to Trucker Trev for giving us the hundred dollars. Should fans be allowed to say we on a on the favorite team? Fans buy tickets, jerseys, NFL tickets, and so forth. And it seems the fans are more loyal than the players switching teams, whether it's college or pro. Trucker Trev, one hell of a question, man. Shout out to you. I think you're driving right now, if I'm not mistaken, listening in. Whatever you're doing, we appreciate you. Make sure you join Winnable as well. Great question. I, I think a fan should be able to say yes. We you support the team. You're from the city most of the time. Of course you, you, you invest into them. You 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 take the time of the day to watch them, buy their jerseys, do all that. Yeah, you should say we, hundred percent. Of course you would say that. JB look like one of them dudes from uh that old movie Warriors. Come out and play. You remember the um, baseball game? Y'all remember that? Anyway, I, I do want to interesting move. interesting question I have. Okay, Shocking well, here. No, nah, he ain't here yet. Oh, I have a. It's a very interesting question here. Because uh, mm -hmm. I go at fans a lot, fanboys. I call them fanboys that are when they say the term "we." Mm -hmm. They say "we," and I'm like, "Who's we?" Uh, the Raider Nation. <laughs> Listen, I respect Trucker Trev, uh, and uh, no, you should not say "we." Mm. I get I get cringe vibes when I hear you say we. Um, mm. I need Trucker Trev to get product from Canada to Florida, Florida to Cali. I don't need him to say <laughs> we when it comes to the fucking New York Giants. Listen, even if I played professional football as I had a cup of tea doing, I never say we when I talk about the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm not with the Chiefs. Um, this dude said, hey, I, I, I want to see Trucker Trev get product from Canada to Florida. Yeah, that's his Florida job. That's his job. He drives truck. He drives truck. He I product. know it is. It's funny. He does a real know. fucking job for America. He's a real American citizen. I know. Uh, I respect him heavily. So we is a very loose term when it comes to – because here's my – I'm defending Trucker Trev in this instance. I agree with what he said. He made a great point. They pay. They're more loyal than the fucking players mm -hmm. wanting to leave. I get that. I think you should be fans and 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 no matter what, support your team. But when you say we, it's just very naive because that team that you call we, mm -hmm. that franchise, the bread winners don't consider you we. And they mm. wouldn't they wouldn't get a shirt off their back to help you when you need and you're in trouble. Mm. I I'm telling you as a man, you should never say that because they don't give a fuck about you. So why would you say we? Be a fan, mm. no matter what. You're gonna through thick and thin. Your coat. You're gonna support the coach every year that they get a new one. The quarterback, whatever, cool. But they don't they don't care about you, Trucker Trev. Whoever your team is. They're they're not they're not giving a fuck about you. It's corporate. It's especially not now. It's even worse now for the average fan. It's corporate America that is supporting these franchises. They don't even care about the painted faced Raider Nation, old school, mm. fucking dog pound. Cleveland NWA. Players. 
You don't even see it, the dog pound in Cleveland no more like we used to. It's corporate America. And listen, support your team. But when you say we, I just get cringe vibes. I just think you should just say, hey, the Eagles. Uh, that's just what I think. But each his own, though. You have the right to. Um, I'm just trying to protect you as a man. That's all. Look at you, man. JB with the huge heart, you know, looking out for the fans and really caring about their emotions and them not getting their feelings hurt. I appreciate that. Moving on, though, amicably, Jonte Porter, you know, this is the, uh, I think, brother of, uh, was it Michael Porter Jr., if I'm not mistaken? You know, he had the whole gambling situation. And NBA commissioner Adam Silver spoke out and uh, basically said that Porter is accused of a cardinal sin. And that punishment, and for that punishment, it could go up to banishment from the league. JB, this is a uh, serious business. After we had kind of broke the news initially, I hadn't really, you know, heard about it too much more after that. Kind of been on the hush hush a little bit. So, but seeing this right here, man, banished from the league. What is your, I guess, what are your thoughts? Do you agree that this this punishment, like if, if he did get banished from the league, that that would be fair? You know, gambling on sport. I just feel like right now, JB, the sports gambling is just out of control. Like the the rules are out of control. The suspensions are kind of. It's almost like they the leagues weren't fully prepared for this, and they and they kind of they just sports gambling just happened, and then all their players are just figuring it out how you know what what they can do, what they can't do. You know, in, in the NFL levels, like well, you can gamble on other sports, but you can never gamble if your feet are on the football campus or in the lot. It's just a lot of just nuance to it. Um, I guess, the, do you think it's fair, though, for this guy to just get, like, his career is over? Well, really got a year. Um, Mario mm -hmm. Williams got a, what, a half a year? Um, Todd Donahue or whatever his name was, the NBA ref who did the most recognizable game uh manipulation of all time as a referee in the NBA got basically life. Now he's back calling like he's handicapping apparently. <laughs> he's capping. Mm. Okay. So <laughs> he's done. He can't referee. Um so I don't know. I'm not trying to answer a question with questions that have we've seen this that we've seen similar acts before. Pete Rose obviously in baseball. Uh this would be White Sox scandal Black, black sock scandalish, um, mm. Smitty. If you don't know what that is, that's just so one of the sound racist. It was one of the um, biggest betting scandals uh, in professional sports history. There's a movie about it. Um, I look. Um, what do you think? Saw what Mo said in the chat. He said if, if this guy was betting on his actual games in which he was playing in, which is, that is the accusation, then he should be banned from for life. If he wasn't, let it go. That's what Mo said. But the accusations that he was betting on actual games in which he was playing in, uh, which is equivalent to what was that NBA referee, you know, back in the days, the Kings and Lakers games. Uh, I can't remember his name. You guys know what I'm talking about. Who he was betting on games that he was refereeing in, and, and he got. Donnie up and got banned for, for life. So, yeah, I, I think you got to because you, you got to make a statement, number one. Number two, it's like you're, you're literally, like, losing games or, or, or what, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the one of the worst things you can do when it comes to a sports gambling thing. Where He's a nobody, though. I know. So, I, and that moves, that's my next point. He's a nobody in terms of the basketball world, of course, obviously. So, for them, it's like, uh, cutting him from the league, banning from the league is nothing. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't take money out of anybody's pockets. No one outside of him and his internal family will bat an eye. Now, you compare him to the Otani situation, they're doing everything possible to, to clear his name. And I'm pretty sure they will clear his name and, and they will move forward. Even if they have straightforward evidence that Otani was involved, they're not going to get this man uh, banned or suspended or anything. Why? Because he's he's everything. And he's a big money maker. So that, that was going to be my next question. I'm glad you brought that up. Like, if Jonte Porter was Kevin Durant, would would they figure out a way to keep this man in the lead? Like, how would things work? You know what I'm saying? 
This is this is deep. Uh, Hector's a better and a capper, and he he was. Uh, we talked yesterday about this. He did like Hector was like, man, even these cats are soft when it comes to fucking betting. They're actually doing this on to get on the under. There's rumors out there that I spoke to a few people. There's rumors out there that certain organizations got a hold of this particular Porter brother and may have gotten a hold of him and said, you need to do X, Y, Z to pay off a debt. This guy's making like 200 or 400 grand. He's not making millions, but he was betting two mil on FanDuel. FanDuel did not report it as an irregular activity when they reported Calvin Ridley like this. They Mm. report, why is this so, why was this, swept under the rug for so long i guess is my question and nobody betting two million dollars in a kitty fan duel knows it you're a nobody in the nba but you are a player of a brother who is pretty much a pretty good known player seems like there's something fishy out there dog whether it's a mob tie to do this whether it's a fan duel bookie deal whether it's get a low-level guy that gets a few minutes a game that can still impact the game to make me some generational money. Something smells fishy, dog, and usually there's smoke, there's fire. I think it's much bigger. This kid might be the pawn uh, in this scheme of things, and I don't know. I don't know. We don't know enough. We just don't know enough. Um, But he's a nobody, so I believe he'd probably be the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And this could be a ploy, too. Hey, we'll give you a million dollars to walk away. We're going to ban you. You're not going to make the NBA next year anyway, probably. Most likely, you're going to be in the G League. I'll give you a million dollars. Walk. But we're going to let you go. You can't ever play again. But we're going to make that precedent to the rest of the NBA. I don't know. It could be bigger. could be bigger than that. Um, Yeah, I mean, but if it is bigger, he better keep his mouth closed. And just take this L because if it's bigger than than him, if it's, if this is bigger than Nino Brown, and you got the and let's say there is some mob ties, hush hush, because now you are talking about different things outside of getting banned from the league. You're talking about getting banned from the earth. So I would just shut up, take the L, go get you a job at FedEx, and um, you know, see if you can be your brother's social it, it, media it manager. And it go doesn't from there. make sense though, Smitty. This 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 story should be huge it does not make sense Mm. that there's just no information out there it's been so hush hush it doesn't make sense adam silver you're supposed to be standing on business you're supposed to be the guy that's transcending the league and you haven't said a fucking word about it you're worried about fucking females coaching men so well, like he did it, say it, a word. It, he said he said this is a cardinal sin. He gonna get banished. What, what he, you, what you, I'm just saying that's just that's just he just out of nowhere. That's his first thing he comes out with. Like, where are you at with what's been going on? That's why we do the we're investigating this process. Like, there's been nothing about this kid. There's been nothing really. Like, this has been one of the most hush hush fucking big time schemes i don't i mean this guy if he did it this is a huge fucking schematical design that i don't know this kid is he a fucking wizard is he a mathematical wizard is he fucking a genius is he a ponzi schemer like what the fuck is this kid that legitimate to the fucking set up a ponzi scheme in the nba what and nobody talks about him because he's porter's brother uh, let's bigger. get hey, let's get connected to this cat. Let's let's get the documentary going. Let's sell this thing to Hulu or Netflix. I mean, let's be the first one to do it. Otani on the other side of things. Otani comes out with this whole big old thing, and now this guy's eating it. His 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 so called his so called interpreter uh, con- interpreter is eating the charges. I eat the charges too. Um, mm. Jeff said the. Mafia would absolutely have zero clout to do it. Jeff, I gotta ask a question. Not let's say not the organization itself or the or the actual entity, but if uh, an outlier, Jeff Nadu was with a certain crime family, mm. and he just got he wanted to go on the side and just yep. pay, and say, "Hey, dog, here, and I need you to go get me this money." That's not out of the realm of possibilities, though, right? He can still say, I'm a mobster. If you don't do this, 
my family's gonna fuck you up, which has had we've had rogue hood gangster cats from a hood that has gone to do that to to scare a tactic abroad, a witness. I've seen that my whole life. So is that too far out the realm of possibilities that a rogue crime boss or a mobster just went out and hollered at him on the side? I can see a lot of possibilities happening that we'll never know about. But FanDuel knew $2 million was being used, being under Kitty, and they didn't say anything. Why mm. is FanDuel so hush-hush? But they threw Calvin Ridley literally over a $3,500 fucking bet the day of. That was known in the news. This guy's got two mil in, in FanDuel and he only makes 200 k Ah, something ain't right. Ain't adding up. Hey, I guess we're going to just and, keep and, on waiting. And, and see, I, I'll be in turn. Don't I do that shit for Otani all motherfucking day, homie. I'll be the motherfucking yin and yin yin yin. I'll be the motherfucker yin and yang to fucking Otani every fucking day. If you fucking take, tell me, hey, here's 10 mil. I need you to eat this. You're going to go do about five to 10 in Attica. Fuck it. Hell yeah, give me 10 mil. And I, and I need also some insurance. And I need uh, my kid to be, that drink good? Uh, I'll be, the king. I'll be the motherfucker. I'll be that motherfucker, homie. He ain't no goddamn interpreter. Homie, I'm fighting. I am fighting the whole interpreter thing. You know why? Why? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm fighting this interpreter thing. Because the homie from Venezuela had no, 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 knew no English two years ago. He got into the country. He now only addresses the media in full English. Two years. Otani been here seven and still don't know English. Everybody different. Nah, everybody not different. Motherfucker's a schematical cat. We've seen this motherfucker bouncing balls in the dugout. Make sure the ball don't bounce back. That's a bet right there. He probably bet 100,000. I'm always saying yes. Yeah, hell yeah. This motherfucker, he is by design. He is by design keeping this motherfucker around. So don't, don't, Shit, I'll be that motherfucker all day, Smith. North Carolina minus eight. <laughs> you know what's funny? I saw old Tiny in the dugout. Was it yesterday? Two days ago, they played, and he was talking to his teammates. I said, hold the fuck up. <laughs> so you need <laughs> hold on, old Tiny. You need an interpreter, but you talk to this American about. He said, man, fucking legs need to get together, man. AD, <laughs> AD hurt, LeBron, oh, yeah. you know, getting the numbers, but he ain't really winning. <laughs> and then in the post-game, you want to get the other turn. <laughs> Bama plus six. <laughs> homie, homie, homie. You ain't fooling nobody. Hobie, like, Hobie. I, 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 this motherfucker get up there at the podium and shit like so Mr. So Otani, what is your take on this motherfucker? Here, this is a her real chronological order of shit. Real All right, shit. Go, go in the order, go in the order. So the media is coming in. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go sit out. I'm gonna go sit down and get ready with my interpreter. All right. Yep. I'm Otani. Media's getting set up. I'm Otani. My, my, my interpreter is right here. But I got another homie right here. That homie is my uh, mm -hmm. bookie, we'll say. We'll say bookie for the time of the North Carolina plus eight. And fucking uh, uh, Bama, uh, Washington. I'm going to say Bama for plus four. Uh, oh, shit. Hey, Smitty. Uh, We'll take we'll take uh, questions now for Otani. Go ahead, Smitty. Ask away. Uh, Otani. So allegations came out that you were gambling on actual baseball games. Is this true? Yeah, true. 
Ya chu. Ya chu. Um, okay, so oh. you're admitting to the crime that you were gambling on games. Can we ask you, when did this start? And are you the ring leader? Or if not, who are you partnering with on these on these bets? Chaka, chaka. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do it no more, homie. I, 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 this motherfucker is, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't eat, and then motherfucker turn around and say, minus eight Carolina in full English. Get the fuck, stop being played, homie. We gotta wake up, homie. Stop being played, homie. We are being played. And you motherfuckers that really believe in this cat don't know no English in six years. But a cat from Venezuela learned that shit like this. This motherfucker is betting on bouncing baseballs in the dugout. Y'all think this motherfucker really thinks that this is real? Steve Kim just texted me and said, your shit sounds like Chinese, not Japanese, motherfucker. Steve Kim just told me I'm Chinese. He said I'm not sounding japanese so i don't i don't know how Jap- i don't really know how what, japanese are are saying, <laughs> what are you drinking what are you drinking no it's the it's the um it's called the undefeated so like just, just i just mean so, so so let's be honest so what what's we doing here <laughs> we as uh, rosetta stone is it is it is that what we need in the dodgers fucking dugout like what's going on we really believe this cat don't know zero english and his interpreter now is taking the fall for this whole get down. All Maybe. of a sudden, he's going to come out and say, you know what? I did it. I, got, I have your debit card information. Your passcode is 6469. And then oh, I got to go now and bet that shit. You have access to my account, and I don't know no English. And we're buying it? I to- we're listen. Buying it? I told you in, in the hood, that's what you do. The, the person who makes the money... They never go down, JB. They never go down. If some shit went down with our show and some allegations came out, you're taking that rap from me. I'm not going to jail. Like the leader never is the one that goes to jail. Like that's 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 what it is. Uh, this is a multi-billionaire. You're gonna mess up generations in, in, of generations if this man goes to jail. So you gotta take the rap. See, there's a there's a and, 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 and I'm sounding Chinese right now. The Japanese are taking major the Chinese are taking major disrespect probably right now in in, in America about my um my Chinese dialect when it should sound like Japanese. Japanese is a whole nother dialect. And then you got Korean that's a whole nother like Steve Kim, he had a whole nother dialect. So there's different, you know, Asian dialects. Just like, hmm. you know, Spanish, not necessarily Mexican. Right. Not, not Hispanic. Not it's not Spanish. Even though it's in Spain, it's a different dialect than Latin and Spanish is not the exact same. Very similar, yeah. but it's not so, the exact same yeah. language. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. But rest in peace, OJ Simpson. Damn, how we damn, okay. RP to, to the juice, man. And speak, bro, I'm on the show. I'm on the show. Bro, these dudes don't want to talk to you. Homie. I'm sorry. Yeah. This motherfucker, my this is my last my brother's last day here, Dan Rail. Dan Rail wants to hop on for 10 minutes, y'all. Do y'all want to talk to Dan Rail or no? I'm asking him right now, bro. I'm about to just bring you on the show. They don't want to see you. By the way, I'm selling a bat, auctioning it for six million dollars. Uh Carolina minus eight. Uh, hey, I'm going to be right back. JB, take over. I'm going to let Dan Rail hop on. He keep begging, man. Hold on, man. I got... I got this... <laughs> Steve Kim, I apologize in advance for ruining the Asian dialect uh, language. Um, I don't know the difference between Chinese and Japanese when it comes to interpretation. So... That being said, I apologize in advance to all my Korean folks. I know a lot more Koreans than any other Asian persuasion. God damn, you scared the shit out of me. Is this are you Dan Trail again? How you guys doing? Hi, Jason. I'm I'm back on. My brother is being an asshole. He didn't want me to get on the show, but 
I'm just honored to be back here. How you guys doing? I was watching the show on my phone, and I love your your accent, your dialect. You sound just like Shohei Otani. Do I? You sound identical to him. I thought it was Otani. I closed my eyes. I thought it was Otani speaking. Does that sound like it? Does you that sound, sound like it? You're amazing. You're spot on. You're spot on. How, how you doing, chat? I see uh, TJ too nasty. What a nasty name. You're nasty. You are you probably smell your own belly button when you're laying down in the bed watching TV. You probably lick on your earring backs. Jason, how's the day going? I saw a video of a guy earlier said you had a big nose. That's not true. It's kind of racist because usually they say black people have the like wider nose. Welcome to my life. So, oh, people, some people listening audio don't think you're black. What? Who said that? Uh, some people on audio, some truck drivers that are driving across the country are listening to it on audio. They think you're white. See, that's the problem with America, Jason. We we put all black people in a box and we just assume that we all talk the same and and walk the same. And I'm just a different guy. I was adopted, separated at birth from my actual parents. I reconnected with them later on in life. But this is who I am. And I've been very successful being this guy. I just don't understand. I wish my brother, Darnell, could accept me for who I am. <sighs> oh, he just, oh, he calls you like whitewashed or a sellout or what? He doesn't verbally say it. I don't want to get him in trouble. I know he has that big time job at job at uh, was it ESPN or Fox or something like that. He doesn't verbally actually say it, Jason. But he gives me the signs that he doesn't fully respect me for who I am. He grew up a little different than me and had we to get a, it out the a, mud. We got a we got a we got a we got a fan. Are we I mean we have a, a guest that comes on, very popular guest that comes on our show by the name of Jeff Nadu. He runs the sit down pod. Um, on on uh, YouTube and on TikTok, he said this is an L segment. Do you know what that would mean? An L segment, like 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 we took an L, like we lost, like it's a bad segment. I don't know. I, I don't know the young people's uh, uh, dialect. I just know don't don't because I'm an is interpreter it, for Otani. Is this like a loser segment? Is he calling us losers? Is he is he? I get I get. You're more his age. So I was asking you. He may be dissing us, Jason. Listen, I'm, I'm younger, but I'm not really into the whole talk tick and the internet. And I don't do a lot of things like that, you know? So I'm a little, I would love for you to just be honest and just tell us exactly what it is, Mr. Nadu. It could be a compliment, Jason. Who knows what it could be? <laughs> but what's going on? You're in Arizona. How's life going? Um, I saw you're out there with the big money man, Pat. Um, it just has to be amazing, right? Yeah, let me ask you something. There's a rumor going around that we use a word loosely on the show. Uh, I usually say I say it. I don't want to say it because I had to ask you yes the other day when I saw you. But a lot of people are considering or asking if you're a T A R D, not a turd, but with an A tar uh, tard. I don't know if you know what that means, but they're asking if you are one. Uh, can you address the fan base? No, I'm 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 African American. I'm 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 a black man. I, I don't. No, no, no. I, I, I'm sorry about that. Um, I would probably take my question as a yes now, uh, without you even have to answer it. But I'll let you answer it. They call. They think you are a tard. Oh, with the with the re in the front. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! In respect to all those in the chat who are that. But that's not that's not me. I I I three AG three eight GPA. A what? Um, a three point eight GPA throughout all of school. I got my associate's degree in biomechanics from Ivy Tech. I am far from that. I have a different personality, different upbringing. Okay, let me let me ask you this question. Um, how are you with the AEs? Because there's a lot of speculation in the chat that you may. Oh, I don't know if you know what AE is. Let me is, read. Let is me that read. automation engineer? Uh, uh, no. Good job, though. You must have been a really, really good student. I want to ask you how you are with the ladies. Let me just be real PC with it. How are you with the ladies? A lot of people think you have a 
feminine side and they may think you go the other way uh oh. i don't i don't know if you know what that means like do you like let me just ask do you like boys or girls is that a music group? I know Boys the Men is a group. Boys the Girls, I never heard of Boys the Girls. Is that is that, a, is that a newer hip group now that's out? No, 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 no. Do you prefer boys mm -hmm. or girls to actually date or talk to? Oh, Jason, don't have to worry about me in that department. I like the ladies, Jason. That's something that I've... Uh, never had an issue obtaining on my side now i do like to look at my body as a temple and what that means is i don't let anybody just get a piece of my hammer so to speak so i like to pick and choose that i haven't had any in a little while but that's by choice jason you know the women the ladies they love dan rail they always had any what at had me. any what vagina and I'm sorry, I hope I can say that word on here. I don't want to be inappropriate. I know this is live, but oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had vagina in a yeah. while. You can say actually, you can say actually, you can actually say pussy. You can't say tarred, but you can say pussy. You can actually show pussy on social media, but you can't cuss. You get banned. It's oh. really ironic. It's really ironic. Yeah, it's really how the algorithm works. The, the algorithms really work in a mysterious way on social media. TikTok has me banned right now um, because I use the words like fuck. Shit. Yeah. Can't How say dare no they? Funny. Yeah. But I see people on YouTube that actually show like your term vagina and they're fine. Their show's blossoming. So huh. it's weird, isn't it? It's like reverse racism. I just don't understand how, you know. But you know what, Jason? You've been hated on ever since that documentary, Last Chance You. So just comes with the territory. Staying on the topic of ladies since you brought it to the table. Do you have any ladies here in this chat that are available and single? Because I am single and I'm ready to mingle. So if you want to uh, get a little piece of Den Rail, I am available. Feel free to uh, put Den Rail in the chat, ladies, if you want a piece of me. And I'll obtain your information from uh, Coach Jason. And uh, we'll go from there. But listen, Darnell is over here staring me down as he always does. So I appreciate you guys for bringing me in. Hope I'll see you guys again in the future. I have to go back to San Diego after in the next couple hours. But again, it's been an honor and a pleasure, Jason. Never change who you are for any fucking body. And that's what I have. Appreciate you, man. We'll clap it up for a day. See you later. Um. Jeff, you don't like that segment? Uh, we had to bring Smitty's brother in for a few days. Um, he's there, and, uh, you know, that's corporate America. That's who you fans out there consider yourself we uh, with right there. So that's to answer my question. We, uh, the Giants franchise, we, no, you're not. That's corporate America. Dan Rail is the corporate America now that you're seeing. You know, they thought your brother was, uh, they thought your brother was white, I guess, on the audio side listening. <laughs> I ain't surprised. I mean, he he talks a little different. When I when we first like reconnected and, and kind of really met each other, I was like, how's this dude, my, my twin brother? And he's totally different, but he's a good dude, man. That's my bro. The chat says that you guys, you guys have the same chain. Yeah, so you're once twins, we, right? Are you twins, fraternal, or what? We're twin brothers. We got separated at birth. Uh, once we reconnected and and actually like found each other, so to speak. Obviously, our parents was elated and gave us like matching chains. It's like twin chain. That's why we, we got two chains. So it kind of represents us. So I do it. For, I do it for mom, Dukes. You know, put a smile Bobby, on her face. Uh, Bobby Brown said what is an ae you have to you have to catch up you have to gonna have to rewind go yes. back and watch the the show back in like last june and just watch every show and then you'll see it 
Go back in June from every show forward and watch every single show. And I'm going to ask you next, uh, tomorrow, Friday, Fearless Friday, Free Game Friday, I'm going to ask you a full-on synopsis. I want you to write me out a paragraph on each show, and I'm going to have a question for each show. So, <clears throat> Bruce Brown, is that your name? Um, do you play for the Toronto Raptors? Anyway, I want you to go back and watch the show, and I'm going to write you. And I need a fucking full synopsis on each one until you find what an AE is, and then come back on the show tomorrow with mm-hmm. a full-on, straight up, I need a full fucking breakdown okay and i so, want it double space mla format and i want your sources cited at the end at least five sources the minimal 12 font yep time new roman uh yeah i uh, mm-hmm. knew eh, yeah we do yeah we got roman um interesting interesting <laughs> Auto- your brother thought it was automated engineering of so course, he's, he's got to be a smart dude. He's smart. I was. He's a little nerd. He's a little nerdy cat. So I <laughs> automation engineer. That's actually kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. That was kind of funny, bro. I ain't gonna hold you, but it makes sense for him. He has like a biomechanics degree or some shit like that. Really? Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm here, Scott. Still today, we're gonna we're gonna go do a few things. We're here for a couple. We have to go attend a few birthday parties of some rather famous people. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you who. Um, but we'll be there. Maybe I'll shoot a little video or something later. Um, Donald Trump? Uh, he will be here soon. Um, Pat was with Donald Trump. I just texted John Daly, by the way, on the break, commercial break, because mm. he's uh, out this way. And I said, come by. I'm at Pat's. So so JD, the man, John Daly. I'm going to see if he uh, will hook up with John, too. Uh, people uh, we're going to meet up with out here. Are also, you far right? I'm gonna try to go see Tank on the way home. I'm gonna try to see Erlacher. Uh they, they don't live too far away. Uh, Rob Schneider uh, is recently a new uh, neighbor of Pat uh, over the last over about the last year. Um, so big time actor right there. Yeah, he left LA. Just didn't want to deal with the politics and and and, and like he said, he wants to live like a king. He's earned the money and he can't in LA. So. Interesting. Um, so you know. maybe we got to move, JB. Hey, even even dudes, even dudes with money, even dudes with money, um, are like trying to get out of LA, dog. It's unfortunate, <sighs> man. Best state, best state. Pat and I had a conversation like that. Best state ever, man. And it's just they 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 turned it upside down. Used to be able to drive up and down the coast, Smitty. Used to be able to PCH. Just, just everything. It just everything's changed, man. And uh, well, hopefully, all y'all move out, and then the prices will go down for me. That'd be good. Yeah. I keep moving. Hey, moving on though, real quick. Another topic we got to bring up, man, is um, I don't know if you saw this, but Russell Wilson basically says uh, he deserves some credit. He didn't say it verbatim, but in a nutshell, basically saying he deserves a little bit of credit for paving the way for guys like Mahomes. He says, uh, for me to be able to go to back to back Super Bowls and win one of them. I think opened up a lot of doors. Now you see guys like Patrick Mahomes who won it. It's really just us so far, but there's more to come. So yeah, Russell Wilson believes he paved the way for, for Patrick Mahomes and other black quarterbacks. It's paved kinda, the way is strong. Oh, that's him on essence, y'all. Yeah, that Caleb has, Williams? No, nah, that's, that's Oh, rough. that's Russell Will. I thought it was Caleb Williams. Um, let me go. So... <clears throat> Uh, Pave the way for me. Like, let me jump in real quick. I'm let you go. Every black quarterback has played a role in the in the develop, not the development, but just the what's the word I'm looking for. Just the the for for the the more opportunities to come for us. Because let's be real. A long time ago, you really didn't see black quarterbacks. You know, it was a lot of it's, beliefs it's, 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 that we weren't smart enough to, for the position. This and that. But to say Russell Wilson like paved the way. That, that, that's like that's kind of like a diss almost to like Doug Williams and like some of well, the well, but but let's be OGs. fair. Let's be fair though. RG three already did it just a month ago. RG three just did it. We had to just discuss it. RG three slapped the shit out of a bunch of people in the face. What do you say? Was, when he when he came out and said that, um, fucking, uh, he came out and said that what's name is the most transcending black quarterback of all time. Remember? Ah. Oh. Yeah, you know RG three be talking though. 
So I gotta address something real quick. Uh Ermu Murfer Skater. Erm. Can you announce it that? Your mom's favorite oh, skater. Oh man, I couldn't I wouldn't even be able to read through that right now. I'm still drunk. Um Contrary to Belief, brought to you by Prize Picks. Uh, Modesto's always been a shithole. <laughs> Modesto's not considered California. It's considered Kansas North. So anyway, moving on amicably, um, <clears throat> we don't consider Northern California part of California in certain places. Um, but shout out to you. Respect to you, Cali boy. Appreciate you. Um, but <laughs> they be the only dude I know who will dish you and then say respect to you. <laughs> it's, it's too late. You know, he dissed me. Oh, hey, Modesto, Merced, Stockton. I got homies all up in there through there, too. Holy Her Stockton fuck. was the hood, though. Shitholes. God damn shitholes. It's like Hemet out here. Hemet, California. Holy fuck. It's one of the meth capitals where it's a shithole. Um, Russell sent Russell Wilson though looks and sounds like a clown. That's why he has his 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 reputation uh preceding himself over the last few years of what he's been doing. So again, I don't he is he particularly said names. Of course, he can't go back in time and say I brought Michael Vick into the league. So he's using guys that are in the league right now, saying that he paved the way. I don't know. I haven't read the story to elaborate enough. But yeah. what is he saying he did to what what specifically did he do? Well, I think I think he Does was he talking say? about the fact that he went to two Super Bowls back to back, won one of them, and now he's saying Mahomes is going back to back Super Bowls. He's winning now one more than one of them. I think he's talking about just like the back the back to back Super Bowl case in terms of that. Like he was one of the is Russell Wilson the first black quarterback to go to back to back Super Bowls? Maybe so, maybe. Maybe that's what he meant. No. You know. He's not, um, he's not like, either. He's not either. Well, there it is. So, like, um, again, every black quarterback plays a role in the growth of the position and also a role in just showcasing that black people can play quarterback. Because for a long time, that was a narrative. So, I, I, I will give him that. But saying he paved the way, when you say you paved the way for something, that's like, like you were the guy, like you were the one, you were the one who did it. Like without you, there wouldn't be these it, other guys. I can't, is I can't Russell say Wilson that. is Russell Wilson in your top five black quarterbacks of all time? I don't have a list. I haven't made a list yet. That's a Just strong. Off, off top of the head, give me five black quarterbacks. Well, you gotta go Doug. Just off the, I mean, first one to ever do it. Gotta go Doug. Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson. I'm just trying to think real quick. I, I was a Manab guy. I like Manab for what he did with the Eagles. Um, hmm, who be my fifth guy? We got Cold Pepper. We got uh, you got my home. You got that. So you gotta put Deshaun Watson all time. No, I'm just thinking out loud. No, I'm just I'm just talking out loud. I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to you put me on the spot. I'm trying to figure this out. Russ might uh, be Russ let might me go, be let me five. go. Let me help. Let me Russ help might this. be five. Let me I'm trying to think is Russell in my top five all time black quarterback. So, Hold on real quick. Is this list? I'm sorry for clarity. Is this list like my favorite or like the best? Just your favorite. Okay, cool. I want to make sure. Okay, I want to make sure. All right. Um, I'm gonna say I'd have to put Randall Cunningham in my list. Um I would also have to have Warren Moon on there. Warren Moon is like on the outside of my top 10 list of all time, a little less black yeah. quarterback. Uh, so he'd be on there. Um, yeah, interesting stat. Oh, interesting yeah, Cam stat. Newton. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. I'm putting Russ for favorite players. I'm putting Russ above. I mean, I'm sorry, Cam above Russ for my favorite. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so he's not my top five. Uh, Steve McNair stat-wise – is not they're not very good at all. Um, but Steve McNair's iconic, but I'm not gonna say he's iconic because he died though. That's just not right to me. I, I a lot of people do that. We put people in positions because they actually die. Like OJ right now, everyone's gonna say 
he's either better or worse because he died recently. That's just how people work. It's crazy. I'd have Cunningham in there. I'd have I'd have to have Vic in there. God, I would, have to, I would have to have Warren. Warren Moon would be one for me. Um, the the last few so interesting stat. Cam Newton came into the league like hair on fire. Yeah. He threw for 400 yards back-to-back games as a rookie, I think the first to ever do it. He never threw for 400 yards again in his career. Yeah, but that don't matter to me, though. Like That's a, that's, that's a very specific stat. Like, okay, maybe I didn't throw for 400, but maybe I threw for 300 and ran 150. And I, and yeah. I and So, like, I don't – What I'm don't saying, really though, is – What I'm saying is, though, like – we came that that's recency bias. He came in for two 400 yard games and they were already talking about, he's going to be the best thing ever. And then he never did it again in his life. That's just like my point to this whole thing. We give these guys and recency bias. is so big. We give these guys that are playing in the now, like Mahomes and other guys, we put them on this pedestal right away. Um, and their story hasn't been written yet. Smitty, we gotta be, we gotta be able to pump our brakes and, let the whole resume be written. Um, I think we still have a long way to go on some of these guys. CJ Stroud has a huge upside. Well, hopefully he could be one. But who knows, right? People are going to put Mahomes in there already, of course, as far as if you're going to talk. To, they're putting guys in the top five all time already, regardless of color. But yeah, your generation is doing that too, by the way. It's not just like that's not like a, yeah. a you thing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doug Williams. Doug Williams is a trendsetter, of course. So he would have to be in there. He's with, automatic. He got to be on there. Like he just yeah. has to. Like no matter uh, what. The trendsetter of all trendsetters, though, is my main man, obviously in Pittsburgh. That a lot of people said Terry Bradshaw would never have played if it was a fair fight uh, back in that time frame. Uh, he was the first real black quarterback that actually set the tone. Nobody really talks about him because he never really started in long enough. Um, Joe Gillum, I believe. Joe Gilliam, Gillum. Um, but he was the true trendsetter of all of them. Um, but, you know, Dante Culpepper had some fabulous years. Uh, don't know if he makes it. McNabb had fabulous years. I don't know if he's in my top five. Yeah, maybe it was to what, four or five in the yeah. championship, playing the Super yeah. Bowl, the field goal away from beating Brady. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, it's just, there's a lot of people I'd have to go through the. Through the whole thing, um, Sean Kent Mahomes is black, bro. Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks, man, that had great. I would love to ask Sean King that. He must have not been making on. I haven't. My, I can't talk to nobody on my phone when this is on because that's the only access I have to talking. So well, I don't it's know too late. I'm, it's it's eight fifty three now, so he, he 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 can't come on anywhere. Cause he come yeah. on the wrong. He wants to. Yeah, Sean, Sean uh, King. Who's the worst? Who's the worst? Who out of your t- just off the of rip? Who is their biggest five bust quarterbacks of all time? Any like anybody? Yeah, anybody. Like not 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 uh not just black. Nah, hell no. Nah. Anybody. <sighs> well, off the top of the head, Jamarcus Russell for sure. Ryan Leaf. Uh, Ryan Leaf. Yeah, Jamarcus Russell and Ryan Leaf. Um Bus. Manzel? Yeah, he damn near got to put him on there, huh? Yeah, man, Johnny Manziel. He was, he was just on Undisputed yesterday at Fox yesterday. Um, you know what? And I hate to do it because he's still he's still playing and still maybe has a well maybe has a chance. But I think you kind of got to put Zach Wilson on there right now. Zach Wilson, like they traded, like he he was top five, top ten pick, wasn't he? Now oh, he froze up. Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson was a top ten pick. I think you got to put Jack, Zach Wilson on there, maybe. All time. Uh, all time, his story's still being written though. He's playing. He's in the league. Yeah, his story's still being written. You right? I get, it, but he's super bad right now. Um, um so we got Manziel for sure. Ryan Leaf. We got is Josh, uh, is Jamarcus Josh, Russell. Is Josh Rosen? Maybe because he was talking that shit. Like Trey, <laughs> Trey Lance, Todd Marinovich. Trey Lance story still going. We don't know. Todd Marinovich. Um. Was one of the greats of all time in high school. Grew up here in San Juan Capistrano, California. Got to see him growing up. Uh, USC was great. First rounder, Raiders. Uh, his daddy would not let him drink a Coke. Uh, he let him snort it, but not drink it. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. 
Uh, there's a lot of dudes, man, that I could that are bust. That I like, got three. I think them three the only ones I feel real confident in right now. It's hard to pick five. Yeah, them three I'm like confident. Like those three on the list. The last two spots I don't know. It's a lot of arguments. It's a lot of like you said. We got to see how Zach Wilson goes on. Zach Wilson's on a very bust like career path, but we got to see. I don't know yet. So, so is Kyler Murray then? No, no. Why, Ky- bro? Why you? <sighs> it's like y'all forget what Kyler Murray has done so far. Like What's Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray has like. Played way better than 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 a Zach Wilson, like what, like lights out way better. He's had, he's had more opportunity. Um, no, he hasn't. Zach Wilson started all last season. What are you talking about? Last two seasons. What are you talking about? Kyler That's Murray's wrong. Kyler Murray's been in the league. Kyler Murray's been in the league four years. Okay, but I'm saying Zach Wilson started two full fucking years, and there was no, no improvement. But no improvement. Had, you can't. You can't. I'm saying his story. He's still going. Kyler Murray has been starting in this league for four years. This guy hasn't. We don't know that. I'm just. I just. Said, all I said was you'd have to consider. No, you can't. You can't Kyler consider Murray Kyler Murray. You can't. You Kyler can't Murray don't do that. nothing else. He, dog, he's the first overall pick. What is you can't got? consider saying he's a bust. He, he he gets drafted to a shitty organization. Once he first gets there, that record gets better. Damn near basically every year as far as wins. Obviously, he gets hurt last year, so la- he comes back and played a few games last year, but he, he was hurt. Like he, he missed a season and a half. So that's that, that's kind of like okay, whatever. But the man was on track it was in the mvp conversation like two seasons ago and i'm gonna keep bringing it up because that matters you can't be in the mvp conversation and be a bust you can't throw 20 plus touchdowns uh, multiple years and be a bust not including your rushing yards that you don't like come on bro i know a lot of teams would love to have kyler murray is rg3 a bust we had this argument like at work before is i i guess technically he is because he was with number two, he number, yeah, number two overall pick, and he did not have that type of career. But like, I, I, I blame injury though. But yeah. I, guess, I guess, I guess that's part of the game. I guess you're still a bust technically. But to me, a bust is like a guy who actually played or whatever. Injury didn't cause no issue. He he played, and the, the dude was just shitty. Is like, is is Vince Young a bust? <sighs> See, Vish Young, Vish Young, I, nah, I don't think he's a bust. I don't think he's a bust. How you define bust, though? That's what I'm saying. Like, we had this argument months ago because. Yeah, yeah, we had this conversation about basketball. Like, Vish, Vish Young, I think, did. A, see, if you say a bust means, like, all right, you were this in college, you got drafted this high, and you were no, and you, and you, you were not as good as you were in college in the NFL, you're a bust. If the, it, like like the hype didn't didn't meet didn't match where you ended up at you're a bust. If that's a conversation, cool. But to me, a bust is like like we thought this guy was gonna be the shit, and he was like trash. Like this guy was shitty. I don't like, know if you can say what thought it means because we've had MVPs. And, I mean, we've had Heisman Trophy winners <clears throat> who have actually Baker Mayfield, Manziel, Kyler Murray, three to start with. Caleb Williams is coming in. Are thought of him what he will do versus what they did and are doing are completely different and you cannot correlate the two. I don't ever say right. who what I think he's gonna do, and I'm gonna then watch him and say, All right, he's a bust. I wait till he plays in the NFL, the man's league, and then yep. I say, Is he a bust or not? I, you can't take college high right. trophy winning quarterbacks and it's then different. say well, he's a bust because he was the Heisman Trophy winner. Has nothing to do with the NFL. Okay. Gotcha. NFL players are either journeymen like Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, you know, Rich Gannon, uh, uh, your boy Minshew, guys that have had success that have been hell able, Joe Flacco, to help organizations win. They're yep. not bust to me. They are actually better than 1%, uh, 99% of the world. They're on a roster, and they're next up to the big-time player, meaning they're not a starter in this league, but they are get in the game and can actually win you a game. Look what happened in Kansas City when Mahomes went down. They had a very serviceable guy who came in there for years, and he retrusted him. That's why he was on their roster, mm-hmm. and he won them games. He beat 
uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars on a 99 yard drive to get the Chiefs into position to go Super Bowl. So backups in this league are very, very uh, instrumental in, in in moving on a franchise. Those aren't busts to me. We could ha- we've had some of those guys be Heisman Trophy winners, and they just were good backups in the NFL. I don't say they're 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 bust. Bust means that regardless of where you were drafted, if you don't pan out and you don't make it, and you're just absolutely out of the league, and you're you're gone in a, in a couple years, and like right now Trey Lance is on bust. He's going 99 miles an hour on all over bus road. He's on bus road headed there. Something dramatic would have to happen for Trey Lance not be a bust. Right. But he's still, like you said, his, he's still young. His career is still panning out. The guy actually played like, what, four games and then got injured. And then that's it. Like, so with him, it's a little bit like we, we it's a more of an unknown, if anything. He just hasn't really had a chance to play fully yet. So we do, we just got to see. But he is on that road. Zach Wilson's on that road. But like, yeah, I agree with you. Like, I don't think Baker Mayfield's a bust. I don't think Kyler Murray's a bust. Baker Mayfield think... was probably going to be a bust before last year. Let's be honest. I don't know, though, because, like, you got to think about, it too. Like, we forget or we just ignore the fact that he took a Cleveland Browns organization to the playoffs, which, again, that's a big fucking deal. Like that's not like the Browns would did. I think they had the, the longest tenured franchise or one of them who, who, uh, who missed the playoffs, and they finally win it argue, when they I get Baker. Argue, but here's where the quarterback guy that knows the sport would change his would would could try to change your mind. That was one of the most loaded rosters in the last ten years in NFL. Mm-hmm. That Cleveland Brown roster. I hear you. I would argue that I would take an average player like Ryan Tannehill on that team, and they win the Super Bowl. Yeah, that but not. Is, but, but we're speaking opinion. hypotheticals, though. We're that's speaking hypotheticals, so we don't know. Mind. It's a hypothetical opinion. Yeah, Tannehill of mind. would not win a Super Bowl. That motherfucker. I think better than Tannehill. Team, on that team, I would say there's a lot of quarterbacks in the league that were under, that were drafted after Baker. That would have won a Super Bowl with that Cleveland Brown team that Baker won and beat Pittsburgh first round and blah blah blah. That team <laughs> that's a big deal, bro. In Cleveland, I, I would argue that that team could have won a Super Bowl with number amount of uh, numerous quarterbacks in the league over Baker. That is how I start to dis- dissect bust or not. Then he left. He got he, he boom. He did a he was a journeyman. He, he two year, two days he goes to the Rams, traded, does a hell of a job. I came on the show and said, what a hell of a job. I'm impressed with Baker Mayfield, learning the protection, did a hell of a job for his team. And then they obviously wasn't good enough to keep him in L.A. He left the Rams, and now he gets a Tampa shot. And look, we'll see. We'll see how Baker ends up. But uh, yeah, He got paid, so hey, somebody, uh, somebody uh, will be here, bus. So Yeah. Uh, but hey man, hey, it's been a loaded show, man. Great show, me and you for the most part. Steve, you know, shout out to Steve Kim for joining us. Sean King probably got busy. Maybe we can get him on tomorrow. We shall see. But I do know tomorrow, big match should be back. We got Jeff Nadu on tomorrow as well. Talk about some more bets. Make sure again, last time I say it, at least for now. Make sure y'all join our winnable. Drop the link real quick so they can see. Shout our out to Max Hess. Right now, right? Our bets are up. My bets right now. My lock picks right now, which I'm 75% winning over the last two weeks. You yep. better go on my lock picks right now. Baseball, I got in there. I got some NBA as it comes down to the play-in. We got the play-in getting ready to go. So I'm gonna t- I made some lock picks for tonight. Go check it out. Winnable slash slap picks. Shout to Patrick in. George. Shout to Max Hess, man. We need two more today before the day's over. JB, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. Wear your seatbelt. My wife said, wash your hands. Uh, what else, baby? What else I tell them? Give me something else. Give me one more thing. I said, watch your surroundings. There you go. Watch your surroundings, JB. Be wash safe. my hands for wash my hands for what? That's something my wife always tells everybody. Always wash your hands. She's a nurse, so she don't fuck around. Always wash your hands no matter what you do. I wash my hands more than I, in my opinion, more than most humans, or more, I would say more than 99% of humans on the earth. 
Well, I'm going to keep I'm a keep hands that freak. I'm a hands freak. Like, I you, have to clean my hands off. You a nasty motherfucker, so it's good that you do that. If you touch me ever and I shake a person's hands and he has clammy hands, I may, I may slap the shit out of him. Okay. So, it's good as know. we go, though, Smitty, as we're leaving the show, yep. um, Otani's interpreter would like to say, Warriors tonight by six. Peace. Peace. Get pressed so fast, you don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass a rap. We won the games, we're missing. We switched.